Can I see myself in that one? Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, people? We're back right now. Yeah, Tipsy Talk, Wavy Wednesday, Champagne, the conversation, the Phantom Before Bed. Again, don't forget for TGM Radio on all social media platforms. Your host, Drunkle J. And again, I got the viral sensation, the white warrior. <laughs> I got Lydia Rose. Are you dumb? <laughs> hey, yo. Uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, Thank you for having me. <laughs> all right, cool. We had a few chats. Just a oh. warrior, though, would be great. <laughs> Is it? All right, cool. All right, yeah, all right, cool. Warrior. warrior would be great. But again, we had some conversation off air. But on a general note, Lydia, I appreciate for you for coming. Thank you for having me. Because I know you're very me. busy. Thank you for having and me. And how are you, like, mentally? How are you doing? And, uh, mentally, I'm note? always in a good place, strong. Okay. It's important. Everyone has their days, but mentally, mm. um, I'm just ready. Because <laughs> we're, we're going through crazy times right now, and again, yeah, people that are always happy are the ones that are really suffering. And so I was checking. Mm. Well, I mean, it is crazy times, but it depends how much you want to let in. Big Dep- facts. Yeah, because look, at the end of the day, we, you know, there's no point of worrying or thinking about or stressing about situations that you can't control. Mm. Um, also, with you know, I think with myself, I'm a little bit disinterested. You know, without saying too much, I'm a bit, you know, smoke screens and mirrors for me. Mm. So when I look around and when I look at the world, yes, it's a state. But when I look at my immediate sort of self, who I am, friends, family, what I've got going on in my life, pretty, pretty good life. Pretty privileged out here, you know. <laughs> All right, cool. We're gonna spin the record back now. Let's do a backstory. Okay. So whereabouts are you from then originally? Uh, I am from West London. Okay, same. Yeah, I'm from. Oh, really? Where? Oh, was, that's why you. That's why you. I was knew. born in Hammersmith. Oh, okay. But raised in South, in it. So I always ah, came South. Okay. But I was born in Hammersmith, See, in it. Okay, I get you. That that's funny because me, a lot of my friends are from South. So okay. I'm glad. So, yes, yeah, so a lot of people that when they when I say West London, like, oh, you don't sound like you're from. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I know. Okay, <laughs> but um, back up. So, but yeah, that's where I'm originally from. Where about the West? Uh wouldn't want to. <laughs> I understand, New I understand. Bush. No, because obviously, like, I was in West the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember where I told you I, I t- we had the conversation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what's it like growing up in Western? Huh? Uh, it... Do you know standards? Do okay. you know what I mean? Nothing, uh, yeah, nothing too spectacular. Mm. Like growing up in, in any place. Do you know what I mean? What was the biggest lesson you learned from growing up in Western? Um, I don't think I can attribute... A lesson to growing up in a particular um part of okay. of, of of london um do you know what i mean that's quite a <laughs> <it's> quite, <laughs> what's the biggest lesson you learned from um from from west london um i suppose the biggest lesson i learned from west london is the diversity you know you've okay. got notting hill gate on one side you've got labrick grove on the other side mm. so you know the biggest lesson that i learned from london is at the heart of it this is what london is Big facts. you know the rich the affluent, mm. the not so rich yet, the not so affluent, um, but the divide um, is 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 immense. But at the same time, there's this really strong sense of community as well. So, um, what's it? You, you're just real when you grow up in London. I think I feel like when anywhere in London, whether it's north, south, east, or west, you've just got a you know, it's London is a culture within itself. Big facts. Yeah, London is a culture within itself. So, um, you know even compared to the rest of the UK. We've got our own we've got our own little thing going on. So mm. depending on what and, and London is a culture within itself, but there's 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 you know there's the there's urban culture mm. and then there's you know made in Chelsea co- culture yep. and then there's your the only way is Essex culture. <laughs> Um, and then you know you got your you know you got your Asian culture. Yeah, do you know what about I mean? It. Yeah, so you've got so many, and that's one of the things that I love about London so much is because diverse. Yeah, it's so diverse, and you know, growing up, I I I had this, the advantage of being around so many different types of people Mm. from so many, you know, different corners of the globe, so many different corners of the world. And I had the experience from a young age, which is why I think we're quite privileged in London, is because we actually have the experience of being able to learn all of this from young. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas if you go further out within the sticks or out of London and those type of areas, it's predominantly white people. Mm. Um, Do you know what I mean? Or predominantly, well, yeah, mainly because obviously London, Britain, do you know what I mean? The race is Caucasian, do you know what I mean? That's the natural, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the natural, that's, 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 that's the race um, predominantly. Mm. But the the beautiful thing about London is you get to experience um, so many different races, races, cultures, religions, um, ideologies, Mm. uh, you know, yeah, and it's beautiful. I think so. Again, to answer the question, the biggest thing that I learned um, 
that I've learned about growing up in London in general is just that diversity is beautiful, but it can also be, you know, a conqueror. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's, it's great to have diversity, but sometimes with that, without a greater understanding of each other's diversity, mm. then that's when we start to misunderstand each other. That's when, you know, it starts to break down. That's when they start to divide and conquer, if that makes sense, mm. um, which is why there's so many narratives running around, you know. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to that. yourself, Lydia. Every time I've had a West person on the show, it's always been calm vibes. I don't yeah. know what it's about West people, they're always calm. I don't know, <laughs> seriously, I don't know what it is yet. And again, yeah. I'm from South, isn't it? So yeah, I didn't yeah, really know yeah. too much about West people in it, but yeah. I was always jealous because again, I used to go not in the whole carnival all the time, innit? Yeah, yeah. And the West guys, you take home, like girls, run, yeah, I live around the corner, let's go, bam, <laughs> in it. You know what I'm saying? Where I was like, well, yeah. we're going to Northern Land, we're going to like, about 15 stops home, in it, kind of thing. Innit? Yeah. And again, I do 100% agree with what you said because again, I grew up in a multicultural area as well, it? so yeah. I can't be racist because, again, in my class, there was always a, someone from Singapore, Bangladesh, yeah. there's mm. a Jewish person, there's a German person, there's a black person, there's a white person. So I've been in these people's houses, innit? And yeah. I understand different cultures, so I definitely understand what you're saying. Innit? And the different foods, that's for the best part of it. <laughs> the different right, foods. Cool. As well. That'll get it. Which yeah. culture has the best food, though? Do you know what? I'm not even going to sit here. And, like, <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not taking no sides at all. I'm not taking no sides. There's no. Do you know what? Because it depends what I fancy. Some days, you know, I fancy Italian. Like, you know facts, what I mean? Facts, and, you know, and some days I fancy some real yard food. Like, do you know what I mean? It just depends what I'm on. And again, that's the beautiful, that diverse thing, thing mm -hmm. about it. Uh, I like East African food, though. I like East African food. Don't ask me to name all the specific dishes. No, but, no, like, I'm, I've too, had I'm some, too what countries, though? Uh, like Somalia. Like okay. Molly, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, er, er, yeah, yeah. A, a couple of my, a couple of my girls cook some really, really, really nice food. Is it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're better than food, me, though. Yeah, You're better. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. I literally, yeah, put some meat on you. So. So in your household, was it two parent household or? Uh, when I was younger, it was a two parent household. My my mom and dad they split up when I was around uh, eight or nine years old. Um. You know, one thing, and I say this all the time, I attribute a lot of, you know, my attributes as a woman mm. um, to my dad's influence in my life. You mm. know, even when him and my mom, um, they, they they broke up and they split up, you know, um, they didn't get along at all. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, as, young as, age, as they did. Um, no, when they broke up, when we was young, they were happy. Do you okay. know what I mean? And then obviously as time went on, I've got three sisters. I've got three beautiful sisters. I'm 30, I'm the oldest. I'm 32. Yeah, yeah, I'm 32. You have to give your age out. I'm that well, you look gorgeous <laughs> though. It's okay. It's the yard food that's making you look young. It's, that's what it is. You know what I mean? It's the planting. Um, <laughs> it's all I eat. No, um, what's it called? Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. So, um, but the thing is, and one thing I write about my dad, so I've got three sisters, right? Mm. so there's two years literally between all of us so by the time my mom was my age like that she had like you know four girls all under the age of 10 right mm. um and what i rated so much about my dad is even when him and my mom had split up now my dad's um a northerner as well right what about um, northern? uh in liverpool liverpool i talks love liverpool like it's, it's a scouser it's, it's, it's a season. nice good time it's all right yeah <laughs> yo i love yeah. liverpool He's a scouser. Um, but, you know, the one thing about, about my dad, which I rate, so my dad, he lived in, I um, moved down to London. Mm. He's got no family in London. You know, his mom passed away when I was just born. Like, no family. No, he's got loads of siblings. They all live up north, right? Like, so every single weekend, um, every single weekend without fail, every other week, three days during the week, my dad would come up and would come, no excuses, no nothing, pick up all four girls and have us, right? There was never one single weekend my dad let me down. There was never one single weekend that like, you know, and it's so crazy when I look back at it now to see, to think of like a man in this day and age with four girls under the age of like 10 years old, um, so he was a really big part of my life and he was a big inspiration to me because, you know, as you go through life as a woman, as you sort of get to understand and start to learn the dating scene and understand, you know, how to deal with, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, right? Mm. So it's always quite problematic as, as you can imagine, because we've got a great lack of understanding of one another as a female and, and, and as male, um, counterparts as which we're meant to be, but we don't understand each other, which is where a lot of the sort of arguments come in but I would definitely attribute a lot of you know who I am today and the value that I place on men 
because of my dad, because he showed up every single day, because he told, because he showed me what morals were, because he, you know, he instilled in me that I am beautiful. He instilled in me that I am intelligent. I'm smart. He instilled in me that, you know, you're not just meant to sit there and look pretty. You're meant to go out there and make a name for yourself. You mm. don't just sit there and rely on a man to pay for you. Mm. You know, my dad, my dad is a provider. So he, you know, even to this day when me and my sisters are with my dad, like, you know, we can't touch the bill, right? Like, do you know what I mean? My dad, my dad, yeah. Teddy, Tessa. <laughs> uh, I shout at him like. So yeah, you, you can't touch the bill and Big stuff facts. like that. But even in saying that, he made he made us understand this, like my role as a man is obviously not to just provide financially, but to provide emotionally, mm. to provide stability. So do you know what I mean? The fact that he was he had he was financially stable and he had all of his shit together, obviously that was, you know, a blessing within itself. However, you know, great man, financial job still didn't keep him and my mum together. And that, that's just the way it goes. But um, but yeah, I attribute a lot of who I am today because of because of sort of his influence Did on me. Did he give you a reason why it didn't work out? Um, they just fell out of love with each other. Okay. You know, one thing my mom my mom actually says right is she says, you know, your dad he's a great father. He's a bit he was a bit of a shit husband. <laughs> so, and you know what? Um, sometimes you know sometimes that happens. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah, like big facts. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that sometimes that happens. So um. So yeah, but shout out, shout out, daddy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm amazed because I can just imagine yeah. one single father with four kids. Yeah, yeah. And he used to say, "Listen, we used to go to the. I mean, sometimes we'd be at the pub at the pool table with him. <laughs> but back then, in the in like the in yeah, early nineties, it was yeah. calm. It was okay. It wasn't that that much of a thing. But yeah, and when I look back at it now, every single weekend without fail, all four of us, no help, no other woman, nothing. Did he give you a reason why? Huh? Did he give you a reason why? As to why he, he was always there on time every single weekend. Like. Yeah, he just he said, "I love you." He said, "Like you know, like your you girls are my everything." Like and it, and I think that that that's just what it is. And he had the ability to do that. Um, he wasn't going to let anything else come in between that. But but in saying that. The other side of it is my mum never made it hard for my father to see us. Okay. Yeah. So even though they might have been arguing, you could imagine, especially as a mum having for like, you know, have it. Well, mind you, they both technically had us full time, but having four kids is stressful, Big right? Facts. So she was like, couldn't wait. But then, so then that was, that's, that's another attributing thing to that. Any feelings that she had about my dad or any arguments that they had, um, you know, she uh, she never she never stopped contact. She always made it easy. She never ever ever stopped that. So because of her, um, and because of her, even though at times she wasn't happy, putting aside the way that she felt about my father, that allowed me and my sisters to have a full experience. Do you ever look at your friends or guy friends sideways where they're in a situation like your parents were? And I think, how is you know, it's not working for you guys where my parents did it? Calm. Uh, no, I don't. And the reason I don't is because every situation is different. Okay. Like I said, the main part of what we have with, you know, I don't have any children, by the way, but the main part of what we have with um, men and female, especially with like, you know, um, with, with the with the co-parent is, you know, they've got a bit of feelings to which whichever one of them either doesn't want to show up enough or wants to show up inconsistently. Um, or, and the other one may want to stop contact at contact. I don't think there is a yes, a right or a wrong answer. I think every single case is different. Every mm. single situation is different and it has to be evaluated on an individual basis because there's so many different things that come in to it. Like, do you know what I mean? And 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 it and it counts. That's why we can't judge. Like we can't. Put, one glove doesn't fit all in this society, Respect. especially these days. You know. I'm not gonna lie to you. Your DM's about to go crazy because you're saying you're 32 and you're single. With I'm kids. not single. No, <laughs> oh. no, 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 no. I'm not single. Let me, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. I'm not single. <laughs> I did not say that. I said I don't have any children. I'm not oh, single. I'm in a very, I'm in a very, very happy relationship at the moment. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank How you very years, much. Months? Um, not too long. It's fairly new. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, fairly new. So a couple of months. Um, but technically, you know, it's been thousands of years. Okay. Um, it's been thousands of years. So yeah, very blessed and lucky to have found a man um like him in 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 this day and age as well. But well, you think it's rare to find a good man? 
I don't think it's rare to find a good man. No, I think I, I said it's rare. I, I'm lucky to find a man like him. And what I mean by that is, you know, we all have our own specific um, you know, wants and needs from relationships. We all have our particular desires, you mm. know. And for me, I, you know, my ideal man is someone who's able to challenge me and, and, and mentally stimulate me, someone who has the same ideologies spiritually as me, someone who's able to be reflective, someone who's able to, you know, be empathic, someone who's able to, you know, connect to, connect to who they are as a, as a divine being mm. and be able to sort of comprehend that. Um, so, it, you know, and then to find someone who is so well fit to who you are as an individual mm -hmm. and to find someone who, you know, when you come together, there's no stress, there's no arguments, there's no pettiness, there's no let's play games and, you know, one person pretends to do this and it's just real upfront, loving, honest, healthy, <laughs> healthy. Big facts. Yeah, and, re and relationship where you communicate with each other. And, you know, I say this, um, I put a post out the other day, right? And I think this is important, especially within relationships, sometimes as women, right? Mm. And this is one thing I want to say. As a, as a society, women have always been, especially when it comes to relationships, women has have always been made to feel like it's them above everything, right? Mm. So as if, if a woman is not happy in a relationship, then it's, you know, oh, it's big trouble. The woman's not happy. And then we've also built this thing up in this narrative, like, you know, um, around just around the women in general and their feelings and we don't ever take it you know women will be like oh did you get a good morning beautiful text this morning if he's not messing you good morning let me tell you something every single day from the day that me and my partner started speaking to him every single day without fail I wake up in the morning mm. and I send him a message first and I send him a voice note and it's morning affirmations I speak life into him every single day I tell him he's a king I tell him he's going to have an amazing day I pray for him and I manifest and I say that every single morning right and the crazy thing is is I do that out of love because I want to affirm to him that that's who he is and as a woman right and um don't, I don't want to get attacked by the, the, the feminazi, <laughs> right? but like, you know, your role. Okay. Mm. And I will say your role because I believe in that. And if you don't believe in that, that's completely down to you. You know, everyone's their own pockets, but I believe your role as a woman is to bring peace to your man. Mm. Right. And not just peace to bring peace, to bring, um, thought to bring knowledge to bring caring to bring love you gotta understand when a man goes out into a, into the world when that man goes out into that world he is expected to be tough he is expected to hide his feelings Big he is facts. expected to hide his emotions mm. he's expected to you know like uh, you know it's funny right I, if, if like you know if if a guy turns around and like you know like makes a sexual t mark, mark towards a woman, it's like, you know, it's harassment. Mm. But women are so easy, like, oh, you look sick. Like, what if that man doesn't like that? So Big there's facts. so many, yeah, there's so Big many facts. double Talk standards. About it. The script. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that happened throughout the day. Um, and that's what it's expect. And it's a site, the whole societal expectation of, of a man is that. So when it comes to, when it comes to that, when it comes to, you know, building them up and, and speaking to them, I'm a big advocate of that. Right. And the funny thing about it is, is, you know, it's hard. Okay. I used to want to always do morning affirmations to myself. Right. But it's hard. You know, you do it for a couple of days. <laughs> I will be big. I will be. Da, da, da. But what's so amazing and so beautiful. What I've noticed is even since I was doing that consistently mm -hmm. waking up every day, speaking life and wishing life into him having an energy reciprocated back to me by him you should see what's happened in my life the time that i've been with him just because i set that vibration every single day and i don't do it for i don't do it for me i do it for him mm. so it, it, it's so crazy because it, it's allowed me to you know whatever i pray for him you know is pray for me and you know there's a beautiful um story a, a friend of mine said and it's a lot it's an islamic saying right and it says you know whenever you pray for someone um, the angels pray for you, right? And that's 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 the 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 um the ethos behind it. Whenever you sit there and you pray for someone's health, you pray for someone's wealth, you pray for someone's abundance, mm. the angels take those prayers and they pray to Allah for you, right? That's an Islamic yeah, an, yeah. an Islamic um saying. So uh so yeah, very, very happy. We went off on it then, but yeah, no, very, no, no, uh, talk, wait, wait, talk. the only thing yeah. is like, bro, we got listen or oh, listen ask a good question, like mm. they asked like bro. Was your mum working and your dad remarried, didn't it? Uh, my dad never remarried. Okay. Um, my mum, um, my um, when she was with my dad, 
Um, she was doing part-time work because my dad was financially providing. When my dad left, he um, didn't pay my mum money. He said to my mum, anything the kids need, let me know. Okay. I'll buy it. And my mum went out and, and worked then. Um, so okay. then, yeah. My mum went out and what worked. What did that do? Like, what's his job? If you don't uh, he is, uh, so he's got, he has quite an interesting job, actually. He is a shippings and exports um, manager, but he deals with cargo and air freight um, all around the world, a particular, like, you know, someone might need a crane in, you know, Uganda, or someone might need, um, like, you know, a ship, a vessel <laughs> somewhere okay. else. So he coordinates, um, he coordinates that. That's uh, that's what he does. Okay, okay, yeah, I yeah. hear that. Yeah. Again, you're very open-minded, like mm. embrace different cultures. Or oh, is this the same then? Uh, yeah, I'd say they are the sa- they are the same. Not as much as me, I'd say. Okay. I, I mean, excuse the pun, but I'm sp- I think I'm the bit of the black sheep of the family. <laughs> Love the same. Hundred percent the same. Hundred percent the same. I'm yeah. the, definitely the black sheep, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, but no, my family are very much like that. Do you know okay. what I mean? Yeah, they are very much like me. Um, I'm probably more immersed um, in you know in maybe urban culture than them because like you know when I grew up I was you know did music did all different types of things you know what I mean mm. um so but yeah but they're pretty much all the same my mom is is very you know is uh is very much like that as well so it's nice so in terms of music who was you listening to growing up then who was I listening to growing up okay what from what age do we want to go primary school to high school all right so if we're gonna no, go college, for... college to college all right cool if we're gonna go to primary school um, I think it was early pr- early primary school would have been like ju- uh, Justin Timberlake. Okay. Um, uh, Usher. Okay. We're in, the, we're in the same agents. I'm curious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. So Justin Timberlake, Usher. When I got to high school, pff, it was straight deep. It was straight D block, no Europe, chic glitch, style. D block, yeah, kissing not yeah, yeah, no. Oh, respect. Oh, yeah, listen. Seriously, I used to bang. I used to love it. Yeah, I just Seriously. really got into it. Yeah, really got into it. I used to bang D block so much, like literally Jada. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, cool. This guy um, was because obviously, like, I'll be honest, with you, I was more G in it than D block. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because so my friends have the argument, like, bro. My, yeah. One of my friends was G in it, and like, I was G in it. My friends, one of my friends was Dipset. See, do you see how it. dip dipset flopped with the verses? Hey, hey listen, oh I my... was like, hey. I was just like, hey. I was you like, no, hey. listen, they, oh my god, it killed me. I was just like, you could tell D block, they'd be on their shit, on their it, thing. prepared, even the girl dips, as well. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah, dipset. Do oh, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're yeah, like a unicorn, you know. I was like, <laughs> I was also um a big Nas fan. Big, big, big Nas. Yeah, I was more Nas than Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You I had to be back there. You couldn't rate Jay. Listen, no, back- no, it's because I was, I went, yeah, I was still yeah, broken. Yeah, so yeah. I couldn't relate to Jay Z. We're saying that, yeah, but I couldn't yeah. understand Nas. Yeah, I couldn't relate yeah, to all that yeah. big pimping. I couldn't really understand it, innit? And Nas had that real, do you know the what green, I mean? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Grittiness to him. Um, I liked Papu. Do you know? Do you pa- remember Uncle Papu Murder? Do you remember Uncle Murder? My favourite. Do you remember? Oh, my favourite right now. My favourite Uncle Murder. I haven't heard him for long. Do you remember Dance of the Devil? That Yo, tune Uncle was Murder, so yeah. freaking. But me out again when I was young, I went through stages. Like yeah. obviously, I was in my junior race, and then I was like my garage. I went for my garage when the summertime yeah. garage as well, innit? Yeah, yeah. And again, obviously, I was more I was more two pack than Biggie, yeah. of course, as well. And like, I was more Nas than Jay. I was more I was more two pack than Biggie. Okay, then. I was more two pack. I like Biggie, but I was definitely more yeah, two pack than Biggie. Okay, yeah, yeah, hey yeah, yo, was where was you? You said unicorn. Definitely. What about UK music? Who was you feeling UK? Uh, all right, so um, UK is more nowadays because back then it wasn't popping the way that it popped now, right? Yeah, Not it was so, like a tab. You couldn't play UK yeah, music you in the car. Yeah, Gareth Gates, that was about you know, the <laughs> pop idol. Gareth you know, like, Young. Um, so I mean, UK artists that I really that I like right now. I'm a big LMA fan. Big fan. Big fan of LMA. Big like fact. I just love her music. Obviously, I'm upset though. Why? She had to go to America to make it, innit? Why could she well, do it because the UK? the UK are haters. Like, basically, sometimes. And that's what it is. And that's what I've noticed as well, right? Even have you sometimes... Have you sat, ever sat there, right, and watched an American do a... um you know, do do a listen to like a UK rapper, right? Like they do one on Storm or Direction, or Directions, Directions, and they, they react to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The amount, they're like, yo! No, <laughs> like, first, because it's the accents that's different, so yeah, that's why yeah. they take into it. But again, 
I'm a bit upset about that because again, I wish she blew in the UK. First. Yeah, yeah. And again, I remember back in the days where it was a taboo. You couldn't listen to UK artists in the car. Yeah, yeah. I remember that clearly. Yeah. Until So Solid came. Yeah. That was yeah, the game changer yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously it took her from there and it kind of thing. Yeah. But again, who else were you feeling in the UK? Um, so I like Ella May. Um, do you know what? Funnily enough, now about a year, what was it, about a year or two ago? I really was vibing with DBE. Obviously, D-Block Europe. I like young as a fuck. Yeah, I, I, do you know what? I, I melody. really... I like his melody, It's man. the melodies. Yeah, yeah, it's I like the, young like, Yeah, it's the melodies for me. So I really, yeah, big... I was a I'm big DBE vibesy person. Like, I liked DBE. So young as a... Like Fredo, I'm a big Fredo. Not big, but a Fredo Look fan. West, so it's I'm a, yeah, no, do you know what? It's not even that. Do you know Fredo's got an energy when he... You know what it is, right? And, you know, I said this to my man not too long ago, right? I've just, I've just always rated the way, um, I, I like, I like the way he raps. It's just sort of like, mm. but what I liked about Fredo the most, right, is I remember he said something. I can't remember what it is, right? And then, you know, it was around the time, again, we've been in this time of cancel culture. Like, you know, everyone is so, <laughs> everyone is, sensitive. Please, everyone is so sensitive. You know, you say one thing and it's like, uh, everyone's up and crying, right? And, every, and but what I don't rate, you see me, as you would have seen, I say things, but I say them with my chest in it. So, I love so it. if I've said it, I've said it once. You won't ever catch me going back and apologizing for what I said. And also, you know, I'm only responsible for what I say. I'm not responsible for how you take it or your, people only draw their um, conclusions from the capacity of what they understand understand in it so mm. i understand that sometimes someone might not get my point of view because their conclusion is only based on x amount and mine might be x amount so you mm. just gotta let that slide <laughs> you just gotta let that get that aside but where was we sorry i've lost my track you said fredo fredo um oh yeah that was it and so so he said something people were crying online about it and he comes on and he does this video and he said and he goes yo he said my <laughs> something like goes my manager told me to come on and apologize right for what i said earlier but fuck you i'm sorry no, no, totally <laughs> Wait, no. I'm to swear. Keep but he was like but he basically was like but fuck you i'm not apologizing to no one i'm following me in it and yeah, it's yeah. that is that type of energy but yeah i'm, I'm afraid of fan Did you ever seen that like, before we made it like no, I don't. No, I just. Um, oh, okay, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't know my man. It just because okay. we're from West London. I'm, 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 just, I'm just curious. We're both from West London. You might. Be <laughs> um, no, no, no. Never. I'm just never bumped into it. Fredo, but I like his energy in it. Like, okay, do you then. know what I mean? I like. I, I like. I like that. But and yeah, it's music. I like his music. Um. So yeah, him, DBE. Uh, who else? Um, I'm trying to think. There's probably like a. There's probably like a couple. Little Sims. Um, okay. Little Sims is is a hard artist who I just don't think sold her soul to like, and I rate and respect her mm. for like the the art that she creates. But I think she's she's too underrated for she's my liking. She's in it. She's in Top Boy as well, isn't it? Huh? She's in Top Boy, isn't it? So she's doing that acting thing as well. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. But do you know? But what? I hear what you're saying. Though, it, it, music wise, I hear what you're saying. It is. Like, again, it, she does like R and B, is it? Yeah. R and B is not really appreciated in the UK, though, isn't it? No, but the thing is, just even her musical and all, it's just general. But again, I don't think she fits the certain look or the stereo or, or, or what you know they want to be popular. She doesn't and sell sex. She doesn't. Yeah. She and exactly that because she again, sex. she does because she doesn't sell sex and because she doesn't have um their standard beauty image. Dark skin, right. Dark, yeah. Because she doesn't have that that's another re because she doesn't compromise on those levels um that's another reason why she's not perpetuated for yeah, yeah. really artists like her who represent women in 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 the light that she does i think should be because i'll be honest i am so sick and tired of hearing women pop up talking about popping their fucking pussy on tracks on i'm i'm tired of it so be real so who aren't you feeling then huh you who, who don't you like then you know who aren't you feeling what as in like Music. i don't do you know what right it, it's not like uh it's hard for me to say because if i don't like the vibe or something i won't listen to it like do you know what i mean and i can't think of anyone like i'm not like i'm not again it depends on the content of the track right okay you could be an artist right and you can make 99 you know like sex tracks right and one poetry track and i might like it and i'll rate that one so it just depends on the track it's okay. not so much the artist um you know, because there's some Cardi B tracks that I like. When she's like, do you know what I mean? But then there's some where I think this is trash. Why are you Big saying it? Like, do you know yeah, what yeah, I yeah, mean? Yeah. And and then and again, but here's the thing, like that's what sells and that's what's continually perpetuated. And it's for me again, it's just even I think was it Shensei jumped on a, a track with um Meg the Stallion? Ter terrible. 
Terrible. Yeah. And Terrible. it's that type of stuff. It's just sort of like, even with these artists, you, they are talented. If you listen to that, because I can bar, right? So if you listen you to that, well, yeah? yeah, I could, I can rap back in the We're day. We're freestyle now, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Later on, yeah? Yeah, maybe. I, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Here we go. I've still got bars. But so when I listen to, when I listen to music, I appreciate um, the punchlines. I like, do you know what I mean? So these women, they can rap, but it's just the contents of it that I'm just getting a bit sort of sick and tired. And it's just sort of the same, same thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Same thing. And I just find it a little bit boring. And again, this is another reason why I come online and, you know, make the comments that I do or say the things that I do. Because to a lot of people, they'd be like, you know, oh, what? She's just being high and mighty and righteous. I'm not. I'm happy with my life. Do you know what I mean? Uh. But, you know, why do you care? I care about society. Mm. I care about what our young women go to see. I don't, I don't have to know you to care about you. I don't have to like you to love you. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? As a human. And again, we're... I feel like even with this whole industry and if we take into consideration social media, there's been so much toxicity built up around it. I mean, even I was thinking about this the other day, right? Do you remember when the, because you, you're around my age, do you remember this? Do you remember when the first Big Brother came out? Channel 5? Yeah, do you Live. remember when the first you dumb, Big you Brother? Crazy. Mm. Game changer, Nasty Nick. Yeah, Nasty Nick, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I remember Channel 5. Cool. Channel 5. Prison Break was on Channel yeah. 5 as well. Hey, damn, I remember that. The London, the, that's what the London Dome and Yeah. Oh, come on, I remember Channel 5, yeah? So, yeah. It was live. So, did Melody, you... Mixed Race. Yeah. Hey. Davina, <laughs> you are live on Channel 4. Yes. Please do hey. not swear. Big Brother House, this is Davina. But like, Nasty Nick was plotted. Yeah, hey, hey, yeah, I'm trying to get Nasty Nick on the show. <laughs> so, if you look at the evolution of, um, and you can look at this the same as online as well. If you look at the evolution of this, that one example of that show, right? And I'm going to try, cast your mind back. Do you remember? how rare it was for a contestant to get booed on the early days of Big Brother. Yeah. Yes, do you, you do you, remember, you had to be you hated, so yeah, hated, hated. hated. Now, did you have you noticed how the years have gone on and on and on, and it went from hardly anyone being booed, right, to now? I haven't watched Big Brother in years, Big, right? Well, but well. for the last time that I did watch it, which would have been about maybe four or five years ago, I might have caught it every single person in that house is hated and it's like as a society we thrive of hate we thrive of pointing out other people's downfalls we thrive of you know feeling better about ourselves because of that and it's sickening mm. and you see it on social media as well you could go on social media and say hey i really like oranges and someone will say how dare you discriminate against pears what about bananas like do you know what i mean it's such a the, the, it's full of, it's full of su such toxicity and then we continue to feed into it and feed into it one thing i say about social media is it's it's great you know it's it's it, it's like chaos right so the definition that some would say chaos would be would it's not good or it's not bad but it has the potential to be the ultimate darkness or the ultimate light mm. and i feel like it goes either way with that and then i feel like again it's just it's just portraying this everlasting narrative of bullshit and um and then taking these you know city girl lifestyle these songs um and this toxic thing and then taking it and then putting it out and then people not realizing wait these women don't do this these women don't 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 do that they go home to their husbands they don't play their music in front of their children i hear that because obviously, I mean, I'm a big fan of what you do, but again, there's always been songs like that. Yeah. So it's not City Girls, not the first people to have those no, songs. No, like it's not. It's not. But I remember back like, in the day I, I'm listening a, me, I'm to a little TLC. Kim fan. No, but even Little Kim, she was very. It was very niche. No, Destiny's I Child. Like even when I was when I was growing up, all the, like you know Fantasia. Like when I see, like, Bing, you know banger, I mean? banger, like, banger. Um, I wanna cater to you, cause banger, baby, this but, is your. Like, do you know what I mean? But Little Kim was sex. She was selling sex. That hardcore picture. Yeah, yeah that's little, iconic. That, isn't it? And, and that, yeah, and that was Little Kim, and that was like, do you know what I mean? That was her thing. But now it's like, and there was different artists that did different things. She wasn't the only role model now every single female music artist is this one stereotype role model big batty big boot like do you know uh, what i mean not really yeah. oh, look at Lisa keys okay yeah she's definitely the ex no no you know what Married, i agree with you yeah kids. yeah yeah wholesome you yeah, know she's, she's not from this era though she's from our era she's from and new Adele. york 
Huh? Again, again, she's not from this new music I era. Music. So you're when I'm we're talking about that, I'm talking about the you uh, know the, the, kids in the past like in the past sort of like four to five years. This whole new like, do you know what I mean? But when you go I, back, yeah, Billaris, Billaris, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> and cool. No, there's some out there, but again, yeah, me, yeah. I'm very, I'm the same age as you, so mm. obviously I can't really listen to kids to a certain extent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's my age group, isn't it? Like, yeah. again, like I don't listen to drill music. Yeah, me That's not my lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah. But there's some people like Dave. He talks to me like he's my age, isn't it? Mm. I can listen to Dave, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Dave. He's I very can, intelligent again, with the way that he. Yeah. Raps. Again, I can listen to Chipmunk. Yeah. I don't really like the name. But no, I can, can I just say proper. something? How can I forget? You see, when you asked me earlier, like who's like my UK artist? Yeah. How did I forget Chip? I'm a I like Chip, but I don't hate the name, but I don't No, I Chip. want like Chip. And again, the, the Storms, you think, put me off him a bit as well. It? No, the thing is, like, oh, why? Because he ducked No, because you talk, you talk <laughs> right with some tracks, yeah, but man was come to your house, isn't it? Like, no, but this is the thing. Chip can't... claimed claim to be a bad man, though. He's always claimed to be bad. Well, you get to the petrol station, you talk reckless. Uh, but when yeah, I was yeah, to your house, the... and that, it's like, it's a decision. <laughs> but again, I'm angry because you say you're from West. Like, yeah, person, yeah. West right now, I love Western. Yeah. I love West. I think Western yeah. are hard. I put, I've got Western over NSG. Yeah. And one of them is for Guyana, so I'm, I'm biased as well, yeah. But I, I like Western as well. And again, I'm so tipsy right now. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, like, Rob, so what? What was your first video that you made that you thought, like, Rob? I'm going viral. Um, <laughs> it was called. Uh, it was actually called having a sugar daddy is glamorized prostitution, and that was my highest traction in video as well. Till now, or uh, yeah, yeah, till now. I've done some of my other um little moments that yeah. I've had online. Um, but yeah, that was that's when it started to pop up. The, the thing is, is like, and here's the thing, right? It's like I'm not. So, it's not. It's not about the video going viral. It's not about vanity metrics. It's not about how many people like it. It's not about how many people follow me. It's not about you know how big my name gets because the reality is is I don't need online to do what I need to do in life. Big do you facts. know what I mean? Like that is not how I generate money. I don't monetize off of line. I don't monetize off of Instagram. My Instagram and what I do online is me just coming forward from a moral standing and saying I see this, this, and this. This is why I don't agree with it, and this is what I would advise as a woman of my age with this life experience. Um, and this is what I think will happen, which is why I talk about, you know, different subjects. I talk about like um, City Girl Lifestyle, Sugar Daddy, and I talk about, um, uh, they, uh, you know, things around sex just in general and stuff like that, the difference between men and women. I talk about dating um, and I highlight issues that I feel need to be need to be said but it's not about going viral because you know you could have a like you know there's been viral videos of a freaking i don't know a pigeon like or a no, yeah, like do you yeah, know what i mean days, anything can go viral it's not about that it's about the impact that you make on people because look a lot of people will be controversial, but without a purpose. At least when I'm controversial, there's a purpose to what I do. They'll, some people will come online and just talk a load of wass and have an opinion. Likes, retweets, yeah, yeah, likes, followers. retweets. They want to, they want to do it for that. But if you listen to every single one of my videos, there's always a very serious message behind it, and there's always something that I want to highlight to people. And to be fair, I couldn't give a f how many views or likes or followers I get from that video. What I want to know is that it that it affected and impacted the right person. Conscious. What, yeah, what I want to know is that a young woman will look at my video and think, oh, maybe this is something a little bit more different to aspire to. I, I want, you know, a, a young girl or, or, or male to look at my video, you know, when they're getting into dating and stuff like that and they don't have any older sisters, they don't have any older mentors and to look at my video surrounding when I'm talking about yeah, waiting just before you have sex and just getting to know someone and understanding energy mm. transfer and exchange. Like, you know, th that's, that's who it's for. So it's not for all of the trolls. It's not for, and a lot of people, again, I got a lot of backlash over... Um, some of my videos, especially the one where, you know, I, I spoke out about um, colorism within dating. Um, and I and I said that I don't agree with a small group of men. Mm -hmm. OK, and let's be honest, it is a small group. It's not a massive group of men. Right. Mm -hmm. Who take terms. Right. Because, look, there's nothing wrong with dating outside your race. There's nothing wrong with having your preference. There's nothing wrong with saying, oh, I saw like white girls, oh, I saw like Asian things. Like, yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But my point is, is there's certain men who I've seen and, and, I've, and I've got, again, 
I can I I can I can't speak from direct experience being a white woman this hasn't happened to me I'm the one on the other end of the spectrum they're saying oh this is why white got do you know what I mean mm. but I've seen this happen to my friends and I remember when I was about 23 years old I went to go to a nightclub district I don't know if it's still even <laughs> I went to go to a nightclub district, right? Mm. And um, the uh, the um, the literally the day before, the day before, the promoter turned around and he was he was like a dark skin brother as well, right? Turned around and said to me, "By the way, how many um, how many like dark girls are you coming with?" And I was like, "What?" He said, "How many dark skin girls are you coming with? Because if you come with too many, the club might not let you in, and I won't be able to honor the deal on the table." And I was like, what? Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? To this day, I haven't, even then, I didn't turn around and tell them that. Like, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, I, I didn't turn around and tell them that. Because you know when it's your birthday? It's like, my birthday is like, you're the queen, in it? Especially the Big girls are sort of like, you can just change your, your mind last minute if you want. It's your birthday. Your people are just going to say, oh, I think I ended up saying something along the lines of like, oh, the promoter was rude to me. I'm not giving my man that. Like, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or something come to that. So just because I don't experience something, it doesn't mean that I don't witness it. Just because, you know, just just because, um, you know, I haven't got children doesn't mean I don't dislike paedophiles. Like, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So you can have an opinion and you can have a, a and have an and have a stance on something. But um, it needs to come from the right place. And like I said, I made a and, and literally a couple of days before that, another one of my friends, she did a video about this. So she did her experience and she was speaking to a guy and um, she wasn't really feeling his sort of attitude. Right. Mm. So she weren't really coming back to him too much. And he tried to be a bit rude to her. And, you know, she told him about himself. She was just like, <laughs> fuck you, fuck your mom. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, do one. And he used to see this is why I like white women. This is why uh, this is why we prefer white women because you guys act like this, right? Now there'll be people that sit there and there'll be men that sit there and say, this is non-existent. I don't know one man or like one brother of mine that would turn around and, and, and speak like this. We don't do that. Da, 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 da. It's a lie. It happens. Mm. Okay. It happens. Speak I've right. seen it happen. I've been out in a group of girls. I've seen the way that men will come over and approach certain tones of girls. I've seen who they leave. But we watch how many times have we sat there and had to watch like, you know, Love Island, for example. Mm. Why is the girl, why, why is the darker skin girl always being, why has it always seemed like, like, do you know what I mean? So th these these narratives are there. Mm. They're not made up. Um, do you know what I mean? They're not there just for fun. Like, do you know what I mean? These narratives, they're there. They're dangerous and they're toxic, right? So like I said, there is no problem with dating outside of your race. Because. There is no problem with, um, you know, anything like that. But there's a massive problem when you take your preference and you use it as a verbal weapon to attack another woman and make her feel inferior to mm. a woman of another race or a lighter complexion of her like do you know what i mean and that doesn't just go to say for black guys because that's the same for white guys as well Ugh, i don't really like black birds fuck off john but like do you know what i mean Ugh, like all oh, their wigs that like, don't don't do that but do you know what i mean but again people are more so triggered because you know as a white woman i've come in and said this here's the thing white people are scared to talk about race mm. okay scared damned if they do damned if they don't that's their attitude towards it so they just stay away from it big facts they're just like oh no i'm gonna pussyfoot around it no i'm a white girl mm. we're talking about white women versus black women this being the most desirable partner and i'm telling you as a white woman that if you say that to me that is a big freaking no-no and i'm not gonna rate you and i'm not gonna respect you you can say oh i have my preference but if you turn around and say you can say oh yeah i like white girls but if you turn around and say oh because black girls are just oh because black girls are just then that's when I've got an issue and that's when I've got a problem because you're not naming what you like about white women, you're naming what you don't like about black women. And and it happens way too often. And even you see like Fresh and Fit, that podcast, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't watch that. Yeah. I don't watch it. I don't, I don't watch, watch it either. I've, watch seen, it. I've, I've seen clips. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. date Shanique was. Right, have you seen the state of you? That's what I'm like, saying. Them guys got no vaginas yeah, in high yeah. school. Now. That's why I can't entertain it. Because yeah. I can tell them. I know I went to school with guys like that, innit? So I can't yeah. entertain it. But I just want to know, like, did your parents have conversations with you about like dating like, in terms of guys and that? Um, as in what dating men yeah, or yeah, dating like, interracial? Yeah, in terms of dating men, like this, yeah. like right, you can't date or you can date or you 
you could date whoever you want. I could, yeah, there was never no, there was with my parents. Obviously, there was never no stipulation around who I dated. It, 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 my my dad's main thing was as long as he makes you happy. Okay. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it was, and again, see, and here's the thing, and this is why a lot of people as well will be misunderstood or or, or be confused, right? Because one could argue, oh, you know. You just get online and you know you you're pulling that card oh because you know oh blm black lives matter oh <laughs> like you know no i've had i've had this, the comments that i've had oh you're not really for the culture fuck you and your opinions i don't care really uh, like you know but but you get that but you don't know me and mm. and it's and and you know what you're everyone is entitled to that because in, you, again like i said earlier people can only draw their conclusion from the capacity of what they understand mm. and if you don't know me at all you don't know my every day you don't know my upbringing you don't know my friends you don't know what i've been through you don't know my whole life experience then how could you possibly know that when i speak up and stand i do it with heart and i do it with truth when there's so much fake shit online big facts so i don't blame people in yeah. it i don't blame people or i don't get upset when people you know um you know get angry at me or make this whole or take one thing that i've said and make this whole big assumption she thinks she's this or she's doing this or she's monetizing that listen let me tell you something i've been monetizing for the past 15 years and i have had no need to actually go online <laughs> and do it when it comes to making money um do you know what i mean that's never been an issue as well mm. and so again this is what i like to stress to people online is when you see me come on again like i said to you earlier i don't have a youtube i'm not consistent enough mm. online is not my life every now and again I'll, I'll need to get something off of my chest Therapy. and yeah that and that's what it is but i come online and i make a bit of a ruckus and i get like do you know what i yeah, mean yeah, yeah. but i start conversations mm. and i make people think and i've always said to people i'm not here for you to agree i'm not here to make you agree with me because mm. that's stupid I, I was even having a conversation with some of the blog pages that I'm posted on, and you know, shout out to Urban. Uh, shout out to <laughs> shout to Bishy, Urban. Shout to Bishy Urban, and um, and basically, you know, I, I said when I've if I've ever done a video and there's not enough like you know people arguing with me, I feel like I haven't hit a hard enough topic. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah, because if I don't Same. have controversy, because look, the reality is, is if is, if everyone likes you right if everyone likes you um and you know everyone appreciates you and everyone agrees with your point of, of view mm. then you're not being your authentic self mm. because people who move mountain people people who move mountains piss people off and that's the reality of it and it's yeah it's it's, it's one of those ones it's just it's 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 interesting well i just want to know as well that um i'm to see right now Tips right now, but I get to be the reason why I asked the reason I'm happy that you came to the show is because the question I get is like, do you, are you happy with when you see a black girl with a white guy? I, and my thing is, when I say that, I say, I don't care that as long as she's I happy, don't, I don't yeah, care, I don't care, happy. it's not my business, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, as, business, as long as they're happy, I don't think it matters. Like I said, I'm pro interracial dating, my, my partner's not white, mm. like, do you know what I mean? So of course I'm happy. I'm happy as long as both parties are being treated the way that they should be treated. And I mean both parties. I don't mean just the woman. I'm happy if there is two people in a relationship and they're giving to each other and they're building each other and they're loving each other. It doesn't matter. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. What my main issue and problem of is, is, is that narrative that white girls are more easier to think. And, you know, that uh, that like that, that's, that's my whole, that's my, um, and like you know, oh, and black girls—they're too, they're too this, or, or they're the less desirable stush, thing. Yeah. And stush, and it's just sort of like stop painting that narrative of our of our women. Like, do you know what I mean? Maybe because maybe they might come across a bit more stush, but look how the world treats them. Like, do you know what I mean? Again, it's easy for me to sit here and go through life. I'm white with blonde hair and blue eyes. The amount of privilege that I have. <laughs> like, and no, and no, I'm being so serious right now. This is what white people don't understand. White privilege is not that because you're white, you're automatically privileged. It's the fact, it, white privilege is your skin color, is not one of the reasons your life is being made harder. And because of your skin color, you're put forward. And because of your skin color and how you look, you're preferred. And all the unconscious biases are picked up. So you will have more privilege in certain areas. You'll go to a job and you know there could be uh you know an, a man of a of a different skin tone there to you you can be equally as good as each other but because of the way unconscious bias plays out you know the white man might get it and mm. that's why you you know you hear a lot of like 
mothers say to their sons and daughters, especially within the, the urban community and the black community, you know, you have to work 10 times harder. You have to work 10 times harder to, to, to be seen. Um, and, 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 and again, that's, that is the cold, hard reality of you life. You believe in that period then? Huh? You believe in that theory? Um, that you have to work. I, I mean, I, here's the thing with me, right? Um, I believe that the corporate, if you're, if you're going to be in a, the UK, mm. in a corporate company, mm. which is predominantly, um, you know, white men, mm. Um, as as a woman, you're going to have to work harder. As a black man, you're going to, and as a black man, you're going to have to work even harder. Um, yeah, because again, unconscious bias, and it's not to say that these managers, oh, they're racist, they're doing this on purpose. You've got to understand the way that humans work psychologically. Do you know what I mean? Okay, let me give you an example. When I sat here and told you that you know I'm a D Block fan and watch verses, you instantly felt more like oh, like more relatable to me, Big right? Facts, 100%. You instantly felt that Big because facts. it's because now the, the subconscious bias that you, the sub bias that you have is that oh, I like Lydia because you know. Now, we vibe to the same type of music, but if you was to have another person come and say, "Oh yes, I like Beethoven," like Spice do you know girls, what I mean? Spice Club Seven, J Justin, uh, Justin Bieber, Lim like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so if you was to, you know, uh, you wouldn't resonate with them on on, on the same level. So yeah, um, and, and that's what it is. It's not necessarily that you that you're more. Um, privileged in life. It's just that in those particular type of situations, especially in corporate environments, um, that is the case. Now, if you want to take that away, if you want to take it to how I made a lot of my money, which is through like, you know, investments and um, and and finance and, and trading and charts and stuff like that. that. Yeah. So if so, if, if you look at that, it doesn't matter what color you are. Big facts. Because the cha the charts don't care. The brokers, mm. they just want to stop you out. They don't care about like, do you know what I mean? Where you are. Mm. So um, so yeah, and so I can't use my white privilege there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But then if I was to but then in a corporate environment, I could walk in and I would automatically have white privilege. One time, right? Mm. This is this is this is how thing it is. One time I was walking down the road, this was a couple years back, right? And um, I was walking to my house. I wasn't far from the station. And I'd come out and I had a hood on. And it was a black hood. It was cold. It was sort of winter. <laughs> and I had a, and I, and I, had, I had rolled a zoot, right? Okay. Um, I had oh, you smoke zoot? Yeah, yeah. Was, hey. uh, yeah, yeah. So I had rolled and um, I was smoking. Mm. I was walking down the road and I was smoking. Now, as I was smoking, it was probably about like half left, right? So it was probably like just like cigarettes. So as I was smoking, now bear in mind, I, weed in my bag too right in my thing because like not massive but you know i had a yeah, draw yeah, yeah. and um and then i was just walking down the road and then to my right as i'm thinking like literally right next to me a big bully van pulls up like a massive big police van right mm -hmm. and they as because they're looking at me from the back they're slowing down mm -hmm. to the point where they're thinking they've stopped there's no cars in front of them now i've got the thing here but i've just said they could think it's a roll up. I've taken my hood down. They've seen my white face. They've seen my blonde hair. I continue to just drove away. Do you okay. know what I mean? I keep knocking this mic. They just drove away. Have you been stopped to search before? Uh, I have been when I was younger. Okay. Um, I have been when I was younger. Um, and I have, you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a, I've been, I have had some, some, run, some run-ins and some incidents with the police we won't talk about yeah, on yeah, air. Yeah, yeah. um but yeah i have been uh stopped and searched before again you talked about the corporate world that's not who do you think is more important a white female or a black man in the corporate world yeah that's a tricky one um that's a tricky one it depends it all depends on the dynamic of the company mm. um but a white female more than likely but it depends on the role do you yeah, know what yeah, i yeah. mean but if we yeah. want to just take it as a basis mm. it would probably be a white female Okay, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of you. Please, yeah, don't stop. I want you to carry on what you're doing. I just want to know, who do you get more hate from? Do you get more hate from white people or black people then? Uh, do you know what? I probably white people. Seriously? Yeah, I don't really get much hate from black people at all. Um, I don't really... Look, I'll be honest with you. I, the, only, I only get, um, the only hate I really get online is um, in the comment section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people might be like, oh, I don't like her voice. Or like, and or, are these that you can actually see their pictures, their faces, no, or they've no, got copying pictures and no, stuff like that? Yeah, they're faceless. Like, do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, they're eggs. Like, do you know, these aren't people. So, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't really get hate online. I've okay. got more. I've got more hate. I got more hate from white people from a few. Not even white people, but just a few, a few like random odd profiles. Yeah, yeah. Messaged me when I did. Um, when I spoke about standing in solidarity. Okay. With um, with black women and just saying we're not having this in it mm. like, anymore. Don't be using those type of narratives around us. Um. But yeah, I mean, but don't get me wrong. I had a few, I had a few people from um, black people as well message me, and some of them wasn't a hundred percent happy with what I said. But once them and I talked about it, Big because facts. yeah, yeah, they said to me, and they didn't come rude. They said, you know what, like I wasn't happy the way you delivered that. I felt like maybe you could have delivered, and they, and they gave me what they said. And you know, there was a couple that I went back and forth with for hours. Do you know you what I mean? Your videos are only like a minute long. Yeah, it was sixty seconds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Opinion, more context. Yeah, 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 yeah. My opinion on that is far more than sixty seconds. Yeah. It's so deep. It's so in depth. You have to know me, where I'm from, my people, my friends, mm. my art, to really get a great depth of why this angers me so much and why it hurts me so much and why I don't like it. Like, do you know what I mean? And um, I feel like you see white girls; they never stand up and say shit. Like they don't. Big like, um, but they facts. don't. Like, and Big this is what facts. I mean. Like, they'll sit there and be, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, we're the beauty standard. Like, but they, and I, and and this is the thing. And I feel like it's time. Like, do you know what I mean? Just showing a bit of solidarity. Just, just standing there and being like, these are humans. Like, we are. Like, do you know what I mean? I got. They, they went at me right because um, I said soul sister at one point. Right, people thought I meant like I was talking like you know Austin Powers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like she was like, <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> And that's all of you on there too, souls. I'm like, when I speak, you know, I believe we're all connected spiritually, in it. Big facts. All connected by souls, in it. Mm. So when I say soul sister, I don't mean it in any type of urban way. I mean it as in we're spiritually connected. Mm. When someone is a soul sister to me, I say that to like, you know, my good friends who like, you know, we can just read each other's minds and we're just so like, you know, or like soul brother or like someone who you're just so innately close to, but you're not. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like blood related to and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't get much hate. And you know what? Some some days I let it go. Some days I'll go to war in the comments. I'll, you know what I mean? Like I can't entertain the comments. I don't yeah, know how you yeah. do it, but I just can't do you it. You know what? I ha these days I don't. I've stopped. But when I first started to get posted on officially urban, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be in that. Oh, listen, no, if you I'm go like, back to my earlier videos, I it. was in that comment section because. As well, I was just like, I, I, I just wanted to answer. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, People would make so many it. assumptions about me. Like, they'd make so many like, oh, she thinks she's this. Oh, she must be this. <laughs> oh. And I used to be like, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no. Suck your mum. No, 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 no. And, and again, for me, it's hard. It's really, you know what? It is hard. I'm not about this social media. I never came online to be an influencer. I came yeah. online to deliver a message. Okay, my messages are all that I care about. I don't care about anything else. Mm. Like fuck your followers, fuck your vanity, vanity metrics. I have a cl close, like circle type friends. I don't need that online. But it's just, yeah, I have. <laughs> no, I hear uh, exactly what you said. But I, yeah. the, the two things I want to ask you before we're going to break. I just know. Yeah. The last time I see is. As the community really come together was the whole Black Lives George Floyd movement, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So where was your mindset at when that kind of happened then? Um the, the the thing is, right, is like where my mindset was is it, it's been it, it had to happen at one point. Okay. Because for me, as as a person, when you're continuously watching it, and, and I'm like everyone, like I think we all just got to the point where like like enough was enough. Like, and even but I'm not the whole because there's the organization organization black lives matter mm. and then there is the the slogan so what are we talking about mm. because the organization the organization is that wasn't in essence what what it is the organization Big was facts. was a group of of a black women but it was a feminist group and it was and it was obviously lgbt focused right mm. so it was that type of group and um, and the reason that I didn't like the way they come in, if you're just taking the slogan, because <laughs> like, the reason I didn't like it by they who come in, like how could you come in and now promote Black Lives Matter when you only cared about black women and not black men before? A lot of wretch, like, do you know what Big I mean? Fact. So, Brianna Tilly in that. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. Um, you know, <sighs> society will continue to act in the way that it does as long as we allow it to. 
Um, and I feel like, again, even with the George Floyd thing and, you know, the whole movement, mm -hmm. I think a lot of that and a lot of the publicity around it as well was very politically placed. Um, I feel like there was a lot to do with sort of like the um, politically over with the elections, especially with um, I'm not mass. I'm not massively well versed on American politics. Same as well. Yeah. Um, but I feel like there was a lot of that surrounding it, a good media story. That was a good push for the Democrats. It was a lockdown. So there's nothing else to talk about. Really, yeah really. so um so yeah i think but what i do love about that is you know it has brought to the forefront um it's it's allowed people to speak up more mm. like do you know what i mean people are taking people are taking less shit mm. and um so that so yeah so that's good but however <sighs> racism is so deep systemically built like do you know what i mean it's just sort of like there had especially with, with with this whole thing even if you want to go back to like you know the fifth is it the fifth amendment yeah yeah it's on netflix isn't it yeah I yeah yeah it too emotional yeah it's too emotional. yeah yeah too it's emotional. just sort of like that was their that was their loophole to slavery yeah, do you emotional. know what i mean because slavery was a massive um was a was a massive business and it, and it still, still is, is. Yeah. and that's why the fifth amendment states every man shall be free it was a slavery loophole they thought they were smart apart from man who's incarcerated and then obviously at that point they started going around Prison's arresting building. black men yeah and that's why we have that 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 that, that prison system but you know again that's with the west if you look at you know you know predominant like countries like africa and what what's what's that like like do you know because you don't have that there so it's obviously because of because of that but then on the opposite you don't have white people or or being treated like that you don't have that oppression there mm. um but yeah we're going back thousands of years of work that we are now as a as a society only turning around and starting to realize how effed up it is mm. we're going back thousands of years that we need to start undoing so i don't feel like we're ever going to get to a really what well, i think we are but not for a very long time we ever going to get to a really truly a true state of equality do you think we'll ever see it in our lifetime uh, i know i okay. per, per, personally not i feel like you know technology will move at an exponential rate but the mindset of men won't and um you know a lot of the time people are stuck in we've got to look at the school system for that we've te been teaching children the past couple hundred years how to be factory employees like do you know what you i mean so yeah. when it comes to mindset when it comes to culture um when it comes to like well not not so culture that's the wrong word um i don't think we'll see it in this lifetime i think we're pioneering the the start of it Mm. I think that w there's a lot of exciting stuff to look forward to. I feel like we're walking into an era where we are going to see a lot more equality, where we're going to start to feel the dynamics and the power dynamics shifting. I feel like there's going to be, you know, the falling of empires, um, so to say, theoretically and like, you know, within modern day and, mm. uh, and stuff. So oh, that's why I can't wait for the metaverse. Mm. I want to jump in the metaverse. I want to see the metaverse is that, man. I mean, to, uh, <laughs> you see, here's all right, cool, right? Oh, let's get into this, right? Uh, Metaverse, right? Mm. I'm not a fan of it. Why not? Right? Okay. I'm not a fan of it, right? Um, because I believe because I believe in real life interaction, right? True. I I'm, I'm not a fan of it because I believe that we're so, it's just sort of like, even just with everything within it, everything virtual, everything, it's like we're separating each other to touch, to kiss, to feel the energy of someone when you're, you don't feel the energy. And again, like, hey, energy, energy, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> hold my crystal right the energy of someone within their presence like do you know what i mean don't get me wrong it's fun mm. to play a game on it's fun to go in and have like a little i don't know va a virtual reality game with your friends yeah, like yeah, a little yeah. tech -er, like do you know what I mean? that would be fun <laughs> i'd play that i'd play that but then building this entire life online like you can sell land look here's one thing right don't get me wrong you won't catch me in the in the metaverse, but you will catch my pounds invested in some of the software that goes okay, around it. Okay, okay. Like, you know what I mean? But me, but because as a businesswoman, I have to look at this as as, as what well, first of all quite a sustainable but inevitable mm. income. The same way that I would have to evaluate the NFT market, the state. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, as a businesswoman, when I look at and I look at placing future investments. Um, because a lot of my other early investments are around tech anyway. Mm. But when I look at that, it would be sort of surrounding that type of area. But do I think it's extremely detrimental for the consciousness of humankind? Yeah, 100%. Because also, 
people act you see and i didn't think it there was this article the other the other week right um and i agree with it and i don't agree with it and i'm gonna touch it it was about this woman she said she put on the vr set she went in she was gang raped in the oh movie. yeah <laughs> yeah i heard about last right, year yeah, right yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I heard about actually that. I, actually she was gang raped now look here's the thing first of all right i don't like play around with that with that type of stuff i i didn't like the way that it felt like she she said she she said it felt like she, it was real and i said I, for me that felt like a bit of an insult to actual um rape victims and mm. stuff like that because you can just take the headset off in yeah, it yeah. right you can just go ahead and do that but even with that it's a pure even even though it's not that deep and it was not a real rape because it wasn't you know what i mean but even the mentality of people let out in a world where there's no limitations no mm. moral compass no nothing Lawless. And it's like lawless. Push. It's like push. A, push. Like, yeah, yeah. Push. It's like a lawless place. And you can just see. I mean, you even see this demonstrated a little bit of an online with people with their burner accounts and they come and say the most fucking disrespectful, du- stupidest Big thing. Facts. Do you know what I mean? It's because they can. That gives them a void because they can't say things with their chest. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? So this will give a lot of, uh, like, you know, a lot of those type of people freedom. Uh, freedom to go in. And if you're not a person who is, you know, high in integrity, high in value, you know, happy with in yourself just in the basic needs i mean I can't, I can't lie i have never right i have never sat there woke up one for oh let me go online and just troll someone <laughs> let me just have a bit of trolling yeah, for yeah, breakfast. Yeah, yeah. let Who's me go who? online and just be an absolute dickhead to someone sometimes i scroll through posts on instagram and i see things that are so stupid and i don't get me wrong there's a little part of me that might be tempted to say oh this person is an idiot because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they are but i don't need to say it so I don't. Do you know what I no, mean? No, I'm, I'm saying this. Like, I can't entertain certain things. Yeah. A lot of things I can't entertain. But I just want to, before we're going to approach, I just want to know, yeah. being for West, what was your mentality like when you when you found out about the, the Glenfield thing situation? Uh, the Glenfield, I was angry. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I was super angry. And I think it just goes back to, you know, what we spoke about earlier, very start of the conversation. One of the things I loved about London was the diversity. But what it taught me was there was we can have the rich on one road and the poor on another. Um, yeah, I was angry because the, the thing is as well as in one of the most expensive boroughs mm. in, in the UK, you don't expect that type of F up to happen, do you? Not only that, you know, uh, it was cheap on the cladding, the construction of it, um, the support for the families after. I don't believe that the correct number of deaths were reported mm. either. Um, and you know, and, and I just feel like it was a huge, disgusting fail from, you know, the council and the government at the time. And it was it was disheartening. It was it was it was horrific. Um, but again, it's a, it's just a, an example of the um, of the of our social structure. Like, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I guarantee if that was situated, you know, just a few blocks to the right or a few blocks to the left, they would have used proper cladding. Mm. But it's just because I was housing do you know what i mean big facts yeah but well, now we're going to break so, 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 where can people find you at social media is that uh she is lydia rose mm. on all platforms so i think i'm just i'm just instagram <laughs> i'm just instagram i'm just no twitter or snapchat uh no 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 don't do don't do snapchat don't do twitter i should start a twitter account shouldn't i i should you, just you're, you're wild tweets um or yeah TikTok? uh no, do you know what no do you know what tiktok shut me down i had a tiktok, <laughs> I had a TikTok and they shut me down they what deleted my account. They said um, uh, they shut me down for bullying, apparently bullying and harassment. <laughs> yeah. um, that's what I got. Sh- apparently bullying and harassment. I got uh, shut down. They started going to my videos, giving me violations. I was just about to hit, I think, a thousand uh, followers. Yeah. And they just shut me down because they knew the reach was going to be a madness. <laughs> um, but I, I have set up a new TikTok. Okay. I had, I've, I've got one thing and I hardly use it. It is She is Lydia Rose. It's the same as my thing. But um, okay. I'm going to start doing more TikTok. My, do you know what? My man is really good on TikTok. He's got like quite a big um, okay. thing. So he's been teaching me recently. He's like, babes, what you got to do? Was he dancing? Do you know? No, he's not dancing. Oh, I'm just curious. No, 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 he's, no, no, no. He's, uh, he's uh, uh, makes relatable vids. He's very like spiritual okay. motivation and stuff okay, like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you him. I'll show, yeah. <laughs> I'll show you him after. But no, he has a, he bought a really really good TikTok following. 
and algorithm. So he's been um mm. teach. I keep getting upset with TikTok. I'm like, oh, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just like, and he's like, baby, you know what? It's just the way that you got to work. You got to understand them. <laughs> so he's been helping me with that, which has been good. Yeah. Mm, but we're going to quick break right now. Yeah. Cool. Tips talk, wavy Wednesday, champagne the conversation, bent before bed. Here we go. Cheers. I'm going to say this with my chest. You are not a savage. You're just scared to get your heart broken by another man. And this is why these type of women tend to have this mentality. It doesn't come from a place of confidence or divine feminine. It comes from a place of hurt and fear and being scared. Ladies, let me tell you one thing, okay? We are not men. We were not born men. We're not built like men, biologically, mentally, or emotionally, okay? Stop acting like men when you are a woman. I don't understand what is going on with you guys. You guys have been watching too much toxic feminist videos, okay? This is not who you are. Women are the bringers of peace, creativity, divine feminine, nurturing life. You're not meant to be out here acting like hoe rags out of anger, fear, and resentment for your past relationships. This is not cool. This woman obviously needs healing and is not respecting herself by treating any other human like that, okay? Ladies, stop acting like men. You are not men. Act like women, okay? That's all I have to say on this matter. All of it. I'm gonna rocket launch this off my chest because it's really pissing me off. So to that particular group of idiotic, small group of men who have the absolute audacity to turn around to our darker skinned soul sisters and say to them, this is why we prefer white and light skinned girls because you lot are too problematic. To that group of men, first of all, fuck you. Second of all, stop saying that shit because we don't want you. There is nothing wrong with dating outside of your race or finding other cultures or skin tones attractive or even just having a preference and preferring a particular type of woman over another. It's your life you can like who you want but there is everything wrong with taking that sensitive statement verbally weaponizing it and using it as an attack on darker skinned women to make them feel less attractive or less inferior or less desirable to their white or lighter skin counterparts any white girl who is happy with you disrespecting a woman the same shade as your mother is low-key racist she's there for your cocky not your culture so please ensure your rice with your green garden peas and leave our melanin rich queens alone we're not here for that bullshit okay no, that girl, you know, come on, no, BD, SM shower, one in I Star Trek, so in the studio, nah, I like, come on, cousin, El Traco, yo, me I say, no, come, aye, aye, digga di man get, aye, girl wanna fuck that, aye, digga di man get, aye, girl wanna fuck that, aye, man get chingy, girl wanna fuck that, digga, digga, digga di man get chingy, Y'all want fuck the friggy. Pass the icebox chili. Still pepper them pops like chili. Dig dig a demon get chingy. Y'all want fuck the friggy. Pass the icebox chili. Still pepper them pops like chili. Dig a demon get chingy. Man get chingy. Y'all want fuck get friggy. She get friggy. Dig a demon get chingy. Man get chingy. Y'all want fuck get friggy. She get friggy. Two Rolex on my wrist. Ops get chings, Ching. so the drama them now bring. Nah, nah. Man, you know, you know, get Rashford when this kick. kick. These 22 G's got blicks. blicks. Balenciagas. Balenciagas, these walkers looking crisp. Runners, runners. Get flipped Flip. like the mercy of these man drips. <laughs> Glizzes and flicks, elevate, I lift up the strip. Grip up the prick, ying up the ying up the prick, then dip. You know to whip, lift up and rinse out the stick. Yeah, man, ting. Shoulder swing, man, ching up a vic. Man, train to bust. Like we was taking trips. Man, taping strips. Up block got that Satan trip. How can a beef, man, that's known for baking ribs? Every day, man, get money. Yeah, want fuck that body. Yard man, warm it, doppy. Hop on ice like slushy. Chef up man Kentucky, Chef. or maybe we bust that brocky. Drip on fleek and fussy, Aye. Scotland Aye. trips with crummy. Give me your money, get chili. Yeah, I'm fucking freaky. Pass the icebox chili, still pepper them pops like chili. Dig a demon get chingy, yeah, I'm fucking freaky. Pass the icebox chili, still pepper them pops like chili. Dig a demon get chingy. Man get chingy, yeah. Y'all want fuck get friggy, yeah. She get friggy, yeah. Digga D man get chingy, man get chingy, man get chingy. Y'all want fuck get friggy, she get friggy. Digga D man get chingy, man get chingy. Y'all want fuck get friggy, she get friggy. Digga D man get chingy, man get chingy. Y'all want fuck get friggy, she get friggy.
<laughs> yo, yo, what's going on, people? Back right now. Yeah, tips to talk with everyone's a champagne and conversation. Back before bed. Your host, Jungle Jay. A wave right now. I'm blaming Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> it was way before I got here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's get to the the money, man. This is my, a lot of listeners are broke right now, isn't it? So let's get to. <laughs> So how do you get into the trading and that then? How did I get into it? Yeah. Um, I just, I, for a while, um, so, okay. So I've been investing for the past sort of uh, five, five to six years, right? Okay. Um, so originally when I started to invest, I would invest, you know, um, I take wages that I would be obviously working, I was working full time, a long side hustle, and I would invest, um, into sort of stocks and shares, oil and commodities and so on and so forth. Mm. Um, so I did that for a while. Uh, but the thing is, is, you know, you're not in, in control of the trigger. Um, do you know what I mean? So I did that for a while. Um, and yeah, it was just really good. But obviously I had professionals. And this is the thing. Here's the thing with stocks and investing, right? Mm. Um, and especially trading, right? I myself um, only last year actually learned how to trade myself properly. As in not giving my money just over to some brokers. As in actually learning how to read the chart, how to understand the candle, um, and how to, you know, basically like make money off of that and stuff, right? Mm. Um, so, so yeah, with, tr with with trading, I was always aware of it because, you know, the market is supply and demand. With everything that we have, it was the most obvious way to make money. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I went and I got a proper education. I got a proper education. Um, and I just started to, I just started to learn how to really basically be able to decipher the charts, understand the charts um and trade forex and high frequency and stuff like that and work at how crypto works so now i mean nowadays um what i've got now is i have a, a bot that trades for me um just because mm. the day-to-day -day, every trading and this is this is what i think trading's not hard right and a lot of people um and this is where a lot of people misunderstand the distinction they think you know trading's hard trading's risky it's not trading is basic all you do is you understand what the candle is telling you, what the pattern is, and then you place your your trade. What's difficult is the psychology behind trading. And um, I would say it's 95% psychology, 5% technical skill. Because your ability to be able, to, the market goes up and down, right? It goes in stages, it goes in fluctuations. Mm. Um, you've got to deal with your emotions and you've got to deal with your demons when it comes on to trading. When I say trading, and I don't suggest it for everybody, if I, I do suggest it for people um who want to sit down and take the time to learn it um really what you're going to be t t doing for the first week or two weeks or even three up to a month mm. you could basically cover the basics of how to um, successfully execute as, as um, a trade but what you really need to focus on and work is on is strategy um and also your mindset surrounding it understanding what probability is understanding you know when to control your greed when to control um your fear mm. when to control your fear of loss when to control your want to um just snap off the table and a lot of people as well what they do is they get into trading and they don't understand what risk management is you know mm. if you've got a what if you open a one thousand pound trading account um, per trade, your risk should only be 1%. So you should only be willing to lose 10 pounds for every trade that you take maximum um, at, at that point. But a lot of people don't understand risk management. But yeah, it was just through understanding the world because it's not just Forex, it's gas, it's electric, it's oil. Like, do you know what I mean? So what do you say to those people that, that well, I've got two jobs right now, I'm trying to get to training, how do I start off? They've, um, I'd say find a good education platform. Okay. Find find a good education platform because here's the thing, right? Um, anything that you want to do do in life, you you need you need to be educated, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just go and you know. A lot of people will say, "Why would I pay for an education platform where there's so much information out for free? I can go read a book." It's not you about too. that. You, yeah, yeah. You need a structure. You need to be able to be taught properly. You need to be taught in a certain way. You need a mentor. You need someone who's going to be able to. Um, you know, teach you when you go wrong. You need all of that. You need a group of people. You need an environment. Like mm. you need all of that type of stuff. Um, I'd say trading. You know, it's something. Um, it it's not for everybody, and it's very high pressured. And I wouldn't say to someone. Um, I wouldn't say to someone who is. Um, 
if you've got to, if you've got an income coming in, go ahead and learn to trade. Okay. But don't just um don't just go and put all of your eggs in and you know <laughs> what I mean and and then just start trading for yourself because uh, it's like you gotta be like a professional athlete. It really is, it's your brain has to be at the same level. Before I would start my trading day, I would have to get up, I'd have to go for a run, I'd have to have a high protein meal, I'd have to get myself into a mind zone, I'd have to get myself into a mindset, I'd have to, you know, look at the financial markets, understand it. So yes, you can make a lot of money in trading but you need mindset you need discipline mm. you need psychology you need to work just to ha- just as hard as on the, on the psychological element of it um as everything else you do not have to find a massive big crazy expensive trading course i don't recommend that at all i'd say recommend a good course probably one for you know anything from 500 to a thousand pounds you know i've spent thousands of pounds on different courses throughout my life because i believe they're valuable Mm. and they've been specifically in regards to whatever i was doing at that particular time right um but get a good course and learn it and take it day by day um but it's not something that you can get rich overnight with it's something like any other skill like if you was to say if you're a hairdresser and you say tomorrow i want to be a builder uh, if, if you was, you know, a builder and you say, okay, tomorrow, you know, you're, you're a bricklayer tomorrow, I want to be an electrician. Mm. You don't just go the next day in and start to be a successful builder or a su- successful electrician. Big facts. Do you know what I mean? And, and this is one thing that people think about trade and they think because you can make a lot of money fast, that you're going to make a lot of money fast. Mm. <laughs> That's like, you know, fact, yeah. you're not going to make a lot of money fast. You're going to make a lot of, you know, I've never s- subscribed to this whole get rich quick thing. Okay. You know, I'm a get rich slow type of girl. I've been getting rich for the past like decades. And it's, t- you know, I mean, it's even taken me this long to get where I am today. And I've still got plenty to go through. But, you know, don't jump on trading because everyone else is doing it because it's a hype. I jumped on trading because I like to work out things. But I looked at the charts. They interested me. I've been wanting to do it for a while. I like to work out how the candles. I like to understand what's the influences are fundamentally going on in the market that's going to make a price move. I like to understand all of the intricate details. I like to work out the Fibonacci movement. I want to know the pips. I want to know all of that type of stuff. I'm interested. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I genuinely find it interesting. But if I don't find it interesting and I'm just in it for the money, then you're in it for the wrong thing. Trading is a a a profitable skill. Mm. If you can learn it, learn it. Um, But it's not something that's going to make you rich overnight. And we need to get out of this culture, kids. There's no fucking, <laughs> there's no, <laughs> I promise you, there is no, there is, there, there's no elevator to success. You've got to take the stairs. Mm. And if that means buying a trading course, absolutely learning nothing, flopping it, blowing your account, that's just one failure down. That doesn't mean you stop. And a lot of people these days, you know, they say 95% of retail, ta- um, retail traders lose. 95% of people don't have what it takes to really apply and discipline yourself to learn a skill. Yeah, of course you lose. How many hours did you study this week? Did you write down every single trade that you put in that journal? Did you write down and note why you lost, why you won, what your emotions were, what you were feeling, what you were thinking, the reason behind that? Was it luck? Was it not? Like, do you know what I mean? 95% of people don't have... And again, we're going back to the way society has conditioned people to be employees, right? And, and and, and, And that's just the way it is. So it's very hard to transition from always being one way to another way. And mm. like, you know, you can't just turn around and be like, you know, you go into a job, you know, you've got your e-learning, get set up, someone's there to train you. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's the same It's the same when you're when you're an entrepreneur or, or when you're self-employed, but you have to take, you, know, you have to take that time. And cool, as you know, Rose, yeah, this show's called Tips to Talk right now, yeah? So we need a drunk story from you. A drunk story? Yeah, man. I know you've had some a wavy drunk stories. Story. Yeah, I know you have some wavy stories for me. I know for um, facts. <laughs> um, a drunk story. Mm. I do, do. You know what, Ray? I can't. I can't really. I can't really. Uh, let me try think. Let me try think. Um, no, I'm not really out here moving wild. <laughs> I'll be real with you. Uh, you got no drunk stories. I have drunk stories no okay uh, all right one time me and one of my besties uh we got so drunk um we come home and stuff like that and like we just like crawled into the door and um i was walking around apparently with like a, a bowl of pasta that had tinfoil in it and i was eating the pasta with my hand and at that point 
Fredo had just dropped it. Fredo had like done his thing. He was like, you don't give the banners the pass. <laughs> And I was walking around saying, saying, I'm not a baddest, but I'm going to eat this pasta. Like, that's, <laughs> I, like I, do you know what I mean? I don't really have, I don't yeah, really yeah. have too, yeah, I don't really have too much because yeah, anytime I've got drunk, I'm just generally quite happy and then just ended up in the chicken shop and that's it. Those, <laughs> uh, yo, those was a love note. I love that, you know. Yeah. Love- <laughs> I'm just quite happy. Do you know what I mean? I haven't had anything too wild happen. And cool. So basically, yeah, I'm a bit jealous of you because obviously you went to a place I've never been to before. But mm-hmm. I wanted to go to so you went to Egypt. I did. I have been to Egypt. What was Egypt like, Mum? Egypt was beautiful. You got Cairo. Was, uh, do you know what? No, I okay. didn't go to Cairo, and I'm upset about that because I wasn't feeling very. We, my friend, we wasn't feeling very well the day that we had it booked to go out there, so we ended up staying in. Um, but yeah, I've been to a lot of places. Egypt was beautiful. It was um, very westernized, though. That's see the pyramids. The Pardon? You see the pyramids? No, because they're out, they're out, and things. So no, oh, okay, I didn't. Okay, okay. It was a waste. To... I want to go back specifically to to, yeah, to, yeah. See, to see them, to see them. So, what's the best country you've been to then? Honestly, the best country I have been to. Uh, I've been a lot of beautiful places, to be honest. Um, Bermuda. Okay. Bermuda was. I wouldn't say the best, is it? Because obviously they've got different things. I had like you know, I, I was a big lover of the vibe, but who's not? Do you know mm. what I mean? It's just very luxurious in Dubai. It's just very like, you know, when you go there, it's just everything is just like princess. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's, that's what I liked about Dubai is beautiful shopping centers, beautiful places, beautiful cars. Um, but yeah, Egypt, again, I went to Egypt like quite it's many, many years ago. Like, do you know what I mean? I was a lot younger when mm. I went. Um, I enjoyed, do you know what? I've been to the, so Bermuda was beautiful. Bermuda was beautiful. I, I, do you know what? Here's a story, but it's not a drunk one. Um, maybe I had a few things. So on my way, so I, I went to Bermuda back. I wasn't planning to go to Bermuda, but I was traveling back from Jamaica, right? So I went, Jamaica? Yeah, I went to Jamaica, right? Hey, so I went to Montego Bay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to, went to Montego. I went to Montego Bay. Went out to Sensei um, as well. Sensei Elizabeth. Um, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So obviously, I went out with my, my people in it and their families out there and okay, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So we stayed in the hotel, but then we got to go down to downtown and I went to all the sort Be of... Be honest, yeah? Yeah. Were you the white girl there? Are your friends? Yeah. Did you get a lot of attention? Uh, what, in Jamaica? Yeah. Uh, what? No, it wasn't. Do you know what? Okay. Do you know what? Like, it wasn't... Um, like, yeah, it wasn't... Of, but the thing is, as well, we, we say this, right? And as well, it's just sort of like... We was just sort of on our... On our fr- all of my friends, I was the only one that was this color. Like, yeah, do you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So I didn't get more attention or less attention. Oh, kidding. I was, like, I was curious. I'm yeah, just curious yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get more attention or less attention mm. or anything like that. Like, you just, as I said, whitey, walk it down. Do you know what I mean? Like, what's good? Like, there's that <laughs> type of stuff. But yeah, otherwise, it was cool. It was a very nice place. The people are welcoming. Okay, like, then. do you know what? Now, I, I want to go, but I, I've got, my thing is, if I go to Jamaica, I won't come back. Yeah. I just won't come back. That's, it's, it's a lot slower out there. I just want, that's my weakness. Jamaica yeah, is my yeah, weakness. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot. You I can think, enjoy that's it. That's why Carnival's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's my weakness. Yeah. Carnival, yo. Yeah. Uh, I hear that. Is still... it coming back? Are they coming back? Yeah, it's coming back. Oh, yeah. okay, that'll be nice. That's it. It's West. Yeah, be happy. Yeah. No, you won't catch. You won't catch me in carnival. Don't you carnival? No, I don't. When I was younger, I did. These days, I don't. Why? Uh, again, too many people. Crowds. Crowds. I don't like crowds. Oh, cool. it's your back. It's your. Uh, it's your doorstep. I know. I know. I don't like crowds. Do you know what? I don't like crowds. Too many people around for me. I'm a quite private. I'm quite a low key person. Like, so you see me online, but it's very hard to catch me in real life more times. Okay. So you know what I mean. So. You don't really catch me like out of like big events or places because you know I've got business to conduct big more facts. time. Like I've got more time, I've got business, I've got work. I would rather put in um to what I'm doing or my current venture mm. or something like that because that's where it needs to be. And I'm tight as well. I don't like spending money. <laughs> I don't. I don't like spending money. I like um, investing it. That's no, no, like yeah. Doing. I'm surprised yeah. you said that because I, I don't really hear girls say that they're tight, but I just want to, is mm. your partner is he like splurgy then no he's not splurgy he's sort of got sim- do you know what he's probably more splurgy than me right i probably may have more sort of discipline um but i'm probably better at managing money but he doesn't spend stupidly either like do you know what i mean for me i always have to look at the value of things mm. do you know what i mean i look at the value versus is it worth it do i need this do i want this what's it going to bring to me um and you know if it's not something that's going to be of value then 
I'm not going to spend money on it. The, the true acquisition of wealth is not how much one can spend, but how much one can keep. And this is what a lot of people don't really get. They'll get money and they'll go out and they'll spend like, you know, unless you're, you know, I say watches, but watches are good investments because, yeah, you know, if you don't invest. Appreciate, don't appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they appreciate. They don't depreciate. Yeah, yeah. But things like cars and, yeah, also and clothes, yeah, that, that, that's all, you know, people spend the most money on food as well. Like, you know, Big just facts. like going out, like just eating food. Why did you say that? Because I'm going for Lent right now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I can't, I'm not right, my, obviously I'm with my partner, but my yeah. partner said like, well, for Lent, I don't want you to do takeaway shops. Oh. So chicken and chips, I have no chicken chips, chicken and chips oh, like, no. since then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And in terms of wealth, what you said, like, in my mindset, in terms of wealth, like, how can you judge someone's happiness, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So for right now, me, my mindset, that like, Snoop Dogg's the, happy, the richest man in the world for me. Yeah. Because he's just happy just being himself, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's true. And... Why do you have to be at Lent right now, man? <laughs> I'm hungry now. Why? I'm Why hungry. I haven't eaten. I've been grinding all day. I've been. I've oh, been man. Oh. <laughs> now you got me on me. But I just don't know, like, I don't want to be a bit down about it. What's your opinion on this whole conspiracy of the whole World War Three thing, isn't it? Oh, I think if the vaccine didn't get you, the nuke will. Okay, then. Um, look. Are you vaccinated? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm, okay, I'm not. Um, no, no, no. That, let me not say that because that's a bit deep. Because I don't know. I, I agree with. I agree with everyone's individual right um, okay. to do what they want to do. I believe if you want, if you want that, you should. If you don't, you shouldn't. What do I think of the war? Mm. Um, there's no smoke without fire. Mm. Is one thing I will say. Another thing that I will say is just I find it quite. comical okay that <laughs> i'll stand in the right word that you know um all of, <sighs> there's wars going on obviously thing but the thing is it's just like the way that this is being blown up mm. it, for me it's it's it, it's a smoke it's a smoke screen right mm. so i'm not saying that i disbelieve it i'm not saying that there's not real issues there i do believe that there is real issues there but it's this whole moral high grounds that everyone is going on and um and as well some of the you know the media has been very as usual very distasteful and very you know like overtly sublet like do you know what i mean these are white europeans like it's just it it doesn't matter who they are whether they like do you know what i mean mm. thing but um yeah i don't know what i think of it i think there's no smoke without fire i don't trust it when the mainstream media paints a picture of someone because i don't i'm not a big believer or truster of them um yeah yeah so i believe even even trump right you see how they de demonized them and, and, and you know I'm, even then i wasn't too i wasn't don't get me wrong i didn't i didn't think he was a stand-up guy but one thing i don't do is listen to the media big facts and you know whenever the media has a perspective about something um i tend to think the opposite okay yeah, yeah i'm like yeah. as well what's, yeah, that's yeah. Wrong. what's your opinion on boris johnson then uh <sighs> Because obviously he's the prime minister, isn't it? Yeah. Boris Johnson is an intelligent man that pretends to act like a clown. Big facts. Now um, we're talking. Yeah. Boris Johnson is very Private calculated, very intelligent, but basically gets away by pretending to be a bumbling idiot. Mm. He knows exactly what he does. Yeah. He knows how he does it, but he relies on his personality to get him through his politics. I think our government is a, t a horrendous state of affairs, and I think it has been for a long time. I think politically, um, we're in probably one of the most pretentious and ridiculous systems. I think the way that the MPs are paid versus how our nurses are paid um, is 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 horrendous. And Teach, it, no, teachers as yeah, well. Yeah, teachers, teachers as well, teachers um, as well. doctors. And, and here's the thing as well. It's just sort of like the government as a system work for us. The mm. government as a system are put in line purely to be able to regulate our day to day. Now, it's it's sort of like the government work for us, but they seem to think that we work for them. And mm. that's what I quite don't like about the government is that, you know, you're running a dictatorship. It's not mm. about you being a dictatorship. And also, I feel like, you know, members of parliament and representatives of parliament usually 
you know, they go to private schools, they go to, uh, they're, they're of a particular class. Mm. So if you're of a particular class, I don't believe that you have the ability to represent an entire nation. I'd like to see more diversity in politics, not in color and in races, but as in, is in culture and class. I'd like to see more diversity in class. So because, hold on, so, so not to show people yeah. that, that. We had Theresa May, that mm -hmm. was a white female in Prime Minister, yeah. But she's still the same class. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. who would you like to see in charge that? Like, what kind of diversity would be like, next in charge of that? Who would you like to see in it? I, there's no one in the current in particular. No, there's no, no I can't give you one. Because again, Sadiq, Sadiq Khan is, is Asian, man, but he's mayor of London, isn't it? Yeah, but again, Sadiq Khan is a particular class of people. And again, there's a difference between, like, you know, Theresa, like, you know, you can say Theresa Bates is a white woman, so am I. But we're, like, do you know what I mean? It's a completely yeah. different class. She's it's, not listening to D-Block. Yeah. She, <laughs> <laughs> Big different facts. different class of people. I'd like Yo, to be more diverse. If Theresa may say that money power respects that. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, I, I get high all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get high, high, high. high. <laughs> This is the Mighty Mighty Dude. Hey, it's true to me, Sidney. I'm the Rider Dad. I'm white, but also. Because there's the class. But that's what it is. They've got, it's a thing. So, yeah, um, not, I'm not happy with politics, just in general. Um, again, I think the whole system has been corrupted mm. um, in, on so many different levels. Um, and I think our political system is a bit of a state. Don't get me wrong. There are worse countries, yes. Big facts. There are much worse countries. Big facts. But you know what I don't like about us is, you see Britain mm. Talk puts about on this big smile, right? Talk about, yeah. Britain puts on this big smile like we are, you know, we're loving, we're caring, we're the motherland. Like, do you know what I mean? But reality is, is Britain has colonized, colonized, enslaved, sent, um, you know, bombed, killed, um, you know, even if you look at the British Empire, just in general, going back, like when, you know, they, you know, when they transitioned from um, Judaism over to Christianity, mm. when Constantine uh, first reverted to Christianity and stuff like that. And even all of that, in regards to that empire, it's been full of bloodshed, it's been full of robbery, it's been full of like, you know, even artifacts that are supposed to be back in Africa. Mm. Um, or, you know, in the British Museum, say, oh, no, 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 we should, we, we, <laughs> well, we should uh, keep them here. It's a matter in of my mind, interest. yeah, London's its own country. That's my mind. Yeah, yeah. That's, my that's, what it feel, that's what it feels like sometimes. But yeah, it's not, it, it's, it, yeah, there's, there's a very clear system in um, structured do you know what I mean? And I think it's becoming more evident, you know, because, you know, five, ten years ago, I used to talk about some of the things I talk about. People are like, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Now, <laughs> now I'm a conspiracy realist, right? Because uh -huh. everything that I've been saying is sort of coming to pass. But, yeah, um, again, I feel like there are some higher powers at the top of the pyramid that are um, that are coming to a head. I believe there's going to be a big change. And cool. So, okay, me, you were from the age group, yeah? And you said conspiracy first. Yeah? I was, yeah. I'm going to throw some out there. I just want you to your okay. briefings in it. All right. Cool. Princess Diana. Killed by the Queen. Cool. Yeah. Madeline McCain. Uh, killed by her parents and their sex offender ring. OJ Simpson. See, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I got you there. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? As as you said that, I just remember him trying to put on the glove. Yeah. And the glove not fitting. Yeah. See, that's what I said. Me, you were same age group, so I remember that, innit? Yeah, I remember yeah, that watching yeah. it live. I remember that, innit? Mm. Um. I did. I didn't know. Even to this day, I think and cool. he could have or he could have. Cool. Like, Forget about you know, that one. Yeah. 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 Nine eleven. Uh. Uh. Set up. Set up. Um. I think they needed a chance. They, they wanted oil from Iraq, and I feel like uh, they wanted to, you know, have a, a, a reason to invade. Right, and I cool. thought that stage in a terror attack was the best thing to do. It's a bit older than us, but the yeah, moon yeah. landing. Uh, fake. I don't believe any human has been to the moon. Okay. At all. Even and, and you know what? Quite interestingly, when you look at it from a, a spiritual, not spiritual perspective, but I, um, I know quite a lot about astral projection mm. and the, you know, and what's quite interesting and common in the astral projection realm, people who are able to, you know, um, move from their bodies and when, mm. when they sleep and be able to move their spirit out is no one can ever go to the moon. Um, it's a common thing that you find in a lot of reports from astral, but you try to go to the moon, you get moved away. There's certain areas that you, that you can't go to. 
Okay. The moon. So quite interesting. But yeah, I don't believe anyone's been on the moon. So no one. I don't. Yeah. I don't no think, one at all. No one at all. No. Okay. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let, yeah. Let's see. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. And right, cool. We got a little bit controversial now, yeah. Okay. But I appreciate honestly that, bro. The N word. What about it? Who's allowed to say it? No one should be allowed to say and it. And when are you to say it? Derogatory term. Because again, no, no, I, the reason why I said it, because we're going to... Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. I'll get, I'll be for different okay. circles in now, Why it? people are not allowed to say the N-word in under any circumstances whatsoever. In general. I, in general, I do not care whether you are explaining it. I don't care if you're singing it in a song. Like, in general, I don't think white people should be allowed to use that word at all, point blank, right? Black people, you guys are allowed to do it, mm. but you shouldn't. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't represent something. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can do it in jest to your boys or to your... Like, do you know what I mean? Like, my... Like, do you know what I mean? But I don't think it's flattering. I don't think... I, do you know what I mean? But, but there's two sides to that story because, you know, that that term was created by, like, slave owners and it was used to be derogatory towards their slaves. So why would you take a term that had so much malice and then and do that? But then I suppose you're alchemizing it into endearment if you're saying it... Um, with love, but um, yeah, white people definitely not. Um, I don't believe even in songs. Like you know, who was I'm it? Happy you said that. Steel? The reason why, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in two different situations where, like, wrong. Yeah. But me personally, I, I don't really say the word N-word anyway. I don't, mm. It's not really. It's more. It's more of American. Thing. I don't really say it. But yeah, there's some songs. If it comes on, I'll sing the same lyrics. That's on the lyrics, yeah. isn't it? Kind of thing. But I've been in a situation where, where my Caucasian counterpart has said the N-word. Yeah. Yeah. And. I've just let it fly. Don't bother me in it, kind of thing. But I've told that person that, bro, if there's another person from my culture that mm. hears you say that, they might react in a certain different ways, isn't it? Yeah. And you can't blame how they react yeah. to how I react, isn't it? Yeah. They no, might want to do something physical to you, isn't it? Because they know that when you, when, when, you, you know that when they say it, you're, even though they shouldn't be saying yeah, it, yeah. they know you're not saying it, they're not saying it in a particular way, but it's, it, it's a word that carries so much offense. Big facts, yeah. So, like, imagine, like, do you know what I mean? And I don't agree with white people said, oh, well, you guys, shut up. Bob. <laughs> all right okay shut up bob it's uh, not about that like do you know what i mean just because someone does something doesn't give you permission to do it but um i do feel like as well i feel like it, it should be stopped because it's a derogatory disgusting term yeah. um but at the same time that has that there is something to be said about if you are someone who uses that word so much mm. then do you get so why do, then do you have the right to be so offended mm. when someone else says it? But in what context are they saying it in? Because if someone is saying you, yeah, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? That's different. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you can be fucking upset at that. Right? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah, like yeah, an yeah. obvious thing. But then if you've got someone who is um, ignorantly, we'll say, without like, singing, sings it along in a song, didn't mean no harm, no malice, but still using it. Are you going to get mad at that? This again, like we spoke about earlier, every case is individual. There's different contexts yeah, yeah, yeah. for everything. But I think a hard ban, not ban, but I think for me, even like a girl, well, like Georgia Still, she did a video the other day and she had the clip in it. I can't remember what song it was, but it was like the the the. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? And she did it mouth it. <laughs> you got to look down when she said it. Mm. But even for me. That's that's a bit much for me, in it. But again, I'm quite not sensitive to that. But because of my upbringing, because of who my people are, I know how I know how much that can cut in it. Yeah, so yeah. I think maybe that's why I'm a little bit more like, oh, of course not. There's mm. other people would argue, oh, well, it's just a word. Oh, well, it's just this. Oh, well, they say like, do you do you, do you know what I mean? That's not actually. Have you heard of the word black fishing before? Yes, I have. I've been I've been told I was black fishing. Seriously, on that you know the video I did about standing with um yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was told that that was black fishing but me uh, no now, i know not, it's not the definition of it, it no was, no so, but me yeah. as i know you as a person like yeah. bro i can't cross you as a person as black fishing because again yeah. the area you grew up in like your your surroundings that's all you know kind of just yeah. what saying but so like again there's a i think again was it jess nelson jesse nelson yeah, yeah. yeah she had a some kind of thing like yeah yeah, that was definitely black fishing. Look, because, okay i don't know her i just yeah, i can't yeah, make yeah, a joke yeah, yeah. i don't know her isn't kind of um, it? do you know what black fishing um yeah, in a way, you could call it that. You could also call it cultural appropriation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you, but I don't, that's about, the music I didn't yeah. make a joke because I don't know who she is. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what she grew up in. But, here, but here's, here's the thing with that, right? 
you know, you see travelers. Yeah. They've been freaking going dark from like day. Like, listen, let me tell you something. But rate them though. They're hustlers. Yeah, yeah. They're hustlers. Travelers, they've been doing that from hustlers. day, right? So look, here's the thing, right? Because there's this thing around skin and darkening and light. You have women that are lightening their skin in darker countries. You have women that are in that are in lighter countries that want darker. There's a beauty standard. There's a narrative now that everyone wants to look for. There's a popular look, right? Mm. Um so, you know, the popular look right now, what's in fashion is to have nice, you know, is 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 to have like really like dark skin and dark like hair. Big bum. And big bum, right? Yeah. And what's in fashion is to, you know, have lip fillers and da -da 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 -da. it's because it's fashionable now. I remember, do you not, you'll remember this because you're similar age to me. Do you not remember when if your, uh, your wife or your girlfriend asked you, hey, does my butt look big in this? Big facts. No, yes was Black the wrong bums. fucking Black answer. Bums. They were not in. Dark skin girls were in fashion. They weren't in. Fat bums, dark skin If you use girls. mixed race, you use a, a star. Yeah, like, a star. you know what I mean? A star. I remember, yeah, of course I remember that. Yeah, so it's, it's a fashion. It's it's a fashion thing. Like, do you know what I mean? And um, yeah, it's just um. Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's tipsy talk. Don't worry about that. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yeah, black fishing. That was where we mm. was. Um, I think there's obvious black fishing. Okay. Um, but do but do I think that people do it with the intent because do you know what I mean? They they want to look um black so to say no i think they want to look popular i think black. they want to look current the kardashian do you class as black fishing uh no because they're armenian okay then. yeah yeah so they're yeah because they're armenian so um that's what they naturally are i don't believe kim i, I don't think she, her bum isn't surgically enhanced i don't believe you don't think so? no 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 I, they, okay. I remember they did i don't think it is she's always been curvy like that like mm. do you know what i mean and look you can be of a different you don't have to be like i've lost quite a lot of weight but i've always had like a bit of a back on me like do you know what okay. i mean what so, eating? What like eating? just you know, all that yard food and like, uh, yeah, yeah, like, 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 <laughs> yeah but what i'm saying is is that like you know, you can be of a different race and, and and have that curvy figure, have that curvaceous figure. Mm. It's just like right now, it's popular. Um, a lot of Mediterranean girls have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think you know, calling out black fishing over stupid little things yeah, is yeah, a lot. Yeah. Like sometimes you'll say, "Oh, she's black," but oh, she's... like no, like do you know what I mean? For me, it's obvious. Like you would obviously have to like like massively darken your skin 10 shades darker mm. you'd have to change the texture and the style of your <laughs> hair you'd have to actually put like afro like but, but that's for me would be actual like um or rachel dozel as well I remember rachel dozel okay. like she would actually like yeah, try yeah, to yeah. pass herself as a light skin thing by actually change that like, she would get extensions and like braids and mm. stuff like that um so yeah but again with the whole thing it is look it is what it is it is cultural appropriation but even with the whole jesse nelson thing she just does what the label tells her to do mm. and, and this is what a lot of people are like just sort of like because that is what they're pushing to be beautiful at the moment and yes we can get offended yes I could imagine how annoying it could be for some for some women when they've had features that they were, you know, all their life they were taking the piss out of for, and now all the white girls want them. Like, do you know what I mean? I can imagine how frustrated, how like how how that could make you feel a bit of a way. But at the end of the day, fashion is like, do you know what I mean? Fashion is fashion. I hear what you're saying, but that's why I rate Ed Sheeran so much. Mm. I've never seen a ginger guy, Nikki ginger guy, blow like that. Yeah, yeah, never yeah, in my life. Yeah, yeah. Never he in my was life. Authentically himself. Authentically, yeah, yeah, but he understands the urban culture, but he's still yeah. himself in it. You can understand the culture, you can immerse yourself yeah. in the culture. You don't that's have what I rate you so much as well. Yeah. You just be uh, you're generally being yourself, like, <laughs> generally, like, bro, I've had a face to face conversation with you, and away yeah. from like, I've had a that like, you know, you know, freaking deep, yeah. like, are you crazy, <laughs> like, bro, I've never had a girl on the talks about chic, are you yeah. crazy, chic. No, no, I did kiss styles, maybe what chic. Oh, come on, are you crazy? But okay, basically, this last time we share this the TikTok topic, yeah. I've had a girl talk to me like, bro, I'm committed, but girls talk to me like, what's your five year plan? Yeah. Why is it five year plan? I don't understand that. What was it with you girls a five year plan? Uh, I think, you know, for a lot of women, um, I mean, I don't necessarily need to know a man's five year plan, but I need to know that you have. Um, the reason women ask this question is because they can give you a good idea of where a man wants to go in life and where he wants to be. But I might not be with you in five years. Um, I might be with you in the next two years. That's it. Yeah, exactly. But if a man turns around to you and here's the thing, if a man turns around and says, you know, in five years time, I plan to be 
Um, you know, uh, I plan to be, my company plans to be turning over a quarter of a million. I plan to be living in this location. I plan to, you know, um, have this type of setup and I plan to be married and have children. Mm. It's very different from a man saying, you know, in five years time, I don't know what I'm going to do, but not really look at like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, but you like me for who I'm in five years, not for who I'm right now. I'm talking to you right who no, I am no, right no, now. No, no, of course. It? But, you know, five years ago, I had a plan to be who I am today. And I think it depends on, I think it depends on the person. Do you know what I mean as well? Because I like to think, you know, I when I say, what are your thoughts for the future? Where are you going to be? It's hard. You can't, of course you can't say, oh, mm. I'm going to be exactly here. But where do you, I think the more question is like, where do you want to be? Like, what are your goals and what are your aspirations? Like what, because, and again, they got this from Steve Harvey's Think Like a Man book. Big facts. That's, that's where they got it from. That's because that's what he said. Big facts. Because like, again, like like that good old Steve says, right? <laughs> Uncle As, Steve. Like Uncle Steve, right? Um, You know, if a man has direction, if a man has purpose, if a man knows where he's going in life, mm. then you know he's 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 a desirable man. Like, do you know what I mean? And not necessarily to say that you have to have everything figured out or anything like that. But you know, when if if you used to turn around to a man and say what you plan for the next five years, and they can at least say, well, you know, I want to have X, Y, Z achieved. Um, and you know, in that five years, like I said, I want to be married or I want to have kids because men, do you know, what I mean, some men, I believe decides like quite early some takes a little thing again it's all individual cases but if you're sitting down and a man is speaking to you about his future in that respect mm. then as a woman you're like okay he's thinking about x he's thinking about y he's th thinking about z and it gives us uh, an opportunity to be able to evaluate if you're you would be a good potential partner or not because here's the thing a lot of people they concentrate on the love story mm. but it's not about having a love story it's about having a life story there's a lot of components that you can have to have a love story with someone do you know what i mean you know butterflies passion Big facts. but to have a life story with someone to settle down with someone to be able to build of that person every single day to be able to build an empire to be able to build each other and and um you know get through tough times and and and, and good times and to really you know grow and and learn and elevate from each other that's a life partner mm. and you know what i mean so and you 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 can't you can have don't get me wrong you can have a love story in a life story but you can't have a life story just in a romance like do you know what i mean so do you think men are intimidated by successful women uh no i i don't think that men um or no and yes or beautiful women, or beautiful uh, women. no no and yes um Beauty, I mean, well, it's two separate things because beauty is the idea of what a man wants women to be, and then a successful woman can sometimes be a turn off because. No, but, uh, cool. I, I define yourself as both. Yeah. And thanks, hun. do you think men like were intimidated to approach you then, or? Um. Yeah, I think that there would be some level of in, in intimidation, but it wouldn't be needed. Okay. Um. Because look, at the end of the day, you see, my man full confidence. Did, like, did, do you did know he what I mean? You? Full, full confidence. Yeah. Did he approach well, you? Well, you know what? Funnily enough, about him is he was my um TikTok crush, right? <laughs> he was a true story, right? He was true story. He was my TikTok crush, and um, and then basically what happened was that I'd see him, and he had quite a big TikTok following. So I was just a fan. I was literally just a fan. I was manifesting him all at the same time, and then he got posted on officially urban. Okay. And then I commented on the page saying, "Oh, I've been following this guy for a while. Or like, I really like his content." And then uh, he saw that comment and messaged me back. And then it was sort of a mutual okay, thing. And we yeah, just yeah, went yeah, off, yeah. Uh, off from there and stuff like that. Yeah. About officially urban, have you seen the things that this decreased, like the views and that? Pardon? Have you noticed the, the views and that decreased? Yeah, I've noticed that across a lot of platforms, though. Where is it? If you're moving to TikTok then or when it was Instagram then or? Why do I think that is? Um, I think that the algorithm. It's set up the way that it's set up. Um, but I think a lot of people have been seeing it. The thing is, is the algorithm behind Instagram changes all of the time. Okay. So just because you've got a big following, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to get out. I think they're still, they're still a powerful platform. And also it depends on the content. Okay. Because, you know, you can go on and see 10, 15 views, but then you can go look at one of my say it with your chest and it's like 50K. Like, do you know what mm. I mean? So it depends what you bring. Okay. It depends what you're saying. 
depends on how true the thing is is if like again and this is another reason with like 60 second um 60 second videos are good because the retention of people mm. and again as well it's frustrating for me to have to think of something to put in 60 seconds as you can tell i'm quite the talker like i'd like to explain myself and stuff so it needs to so it needs to be hard and hitting but you got to understand is the way that people are these days is that technology that you everything has to be kept fast 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 mm. like do you know what i mean um, so if you're not delivering a message and you're not keeping that engagement on, so if it's something you just look at and scroll past, then Instagram are not going to push it out to more people. Mm. But if you're looking at it, you're getting the trolls angry and they're commenting, like, do you know what I big mean? Facts, and, 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 and they're yeah, coming yeah, in, then it, it builds traction. So, um, yeah, I think, it, but I know it's not too long. I was looking at Major Fink's page the other day as well. And I, I think I had a video they posted or they reposted from Officially Urban. And me, I'm a little bit like, I like to check the statistics. The statistics of <laughs> I do. I like to know that my video is traction high. Like Numbers don't lie. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, so I so I like to see what's going on because the thing is, is because I know about what I know about the algorithm, like, do you know what I mean? I know the more views it has, that means the more people have watched it, the longer people have watched it, the more people have taken it in, the more comments, the more thought processes has, has gone behind that. Facts, yeah. So for real, so, so, so then, okay, cool. There's my impacts. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's an important thing to sort of analyze. Um, but I, I do believe that TikTok is now the number one mm, website same, site in the same, UK. Same. And but they me, keep shutting as me a down. Guy, I, I just can't put my phone there and just start dancing. I just can't do this. Just me personally, I can't do that. It's not a dancing thing. No, I hear that, but it's just yeah. emasculating. I just can't but there's do plenty, it. No, but I've seen the TikTok dances and, you know, my man hasn't done any of them. Um, I, <laughs> like, but, <laughs> you know, but, you know, but there's, it's the same way. It's, it's the same content. Mm. Instagram, like, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he like, you cool. know, when... um. This because this is filmed, right? I yeah. might chop this up and I'll put this up, put some Instagram, but yeah, I might put cool. it on TikTok too. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm more yeah, than yeah. likely will. Do you know what? Like I said, my man's been on to me in it because I need, <laughs> nah, he's been on to me. He's like, you know, you need to utilize this algorithm now, especially when uh -huh. it's been in the thing. And I'm just being a little bit stubborn. I'm like, no, nah, babe, like, do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's I, so I think that's not, yeah, I think that's that's I don't think it's a. Uh, so that, that's what it is with that. Um, and I think with TikTok as well, it's very scrolly. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? But I think with anything, things will go up and down, but it just depends on your content. Basically, we've got three minutes left. And again, you're more intelligent than me. So just, you know, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm <laughs> there's right areas now, but... in, 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 I'm not. <laughs> I just want to give a message to the kids right now. now. What, yeah. What's your advice to these kids growing up these days in London, isn't it? Uh, okay. My advice is, is that don't look at the, the phone screen. And um, don't look at your phone screen and don't look at what's going on on social media um, and online and take that as, as an example. Always remember when you look at things online that, you know, you're only seeing about 3% of the reality. Mm. Um, where you really need to focus on is building yourself every single day, understanding that, you know, in this life, nothing will be given to you. You have to go out and take it. Mm. Um, that, you know, if you want to do something, get up every single day and fight for it and find what you really love to do. You know, I spent a very long time actually chasing money doing things that I don't love. Mm. I've only just recently been able to wake up every single day and do what I love to do every single day of, of the week. And um, one thing that I will say to the young people is, first of all, like, you know, you are your own person. You're your own prophet. You are who you are. You don't need to follow the ideologies or the trends of anyone else. Just understand what you want, understand what you like, understand what makes you happy, and then go out there and get it. Don't subscribe to this nonchalant, on emotionless um you know narrative around dating and meeting people when when you meet someone who you like if you're a man you know this whole simp thing listen that's just that, that's men who don't get pussy calling you a simp I'm <laughs> hey yo i'm not i'm just saying because to be able to be kind and to be loving to a woman and to make her happy and to make her smart listen mm -hmm. you give a woman you know you give like what you you give a woman a house she'll give you a home like do you know what i mean women will give you back Happy wife is happy life. Happy wife is happy life. Big but facts. happy husband is also just as equally as important. And Big that's facts. what I want young men to remember. It's not all about women. Young women, I want you to take more accountability for your actions. Mm -hmm. Understand that you are your own woman, that you fit, that, that you are who you are. Also take accountability for the fact of, you know, it's, you know, you can, you can date a guy and you can be, you know, interested in the guy, but like, 
it's down to you to decide and it's down to you to understand whether that's someone who is a good person for you. If they turn mm. out to be bullshit, blame your judgment. Don't blame other people. Get better at understanding people. Get better at reading people. And stop prescribing to this like pussyfooting around everything world. Do you know what I mean? And just be who you are. Find what you love to do and do it every single day. Mm. And just be unapologetic. And never apologize for shit you say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, do you know what? I don't mean it like that. If you say something real fucked that. up, but be unapologetic in, in who you are. And that's just what it is. Before we leave, shout your socials. What can we find you at? She is Lydia Rose. S H I E I S L Y D I A Rose on Instagram and on TikTok. Tips to talk, Wave Wednesday, Champagne and Conversation, Button Before Bed, Lydia Rose. Here we go. Cheers. Uh, <laughs>